sa iba kundi sa iyo at sa akin nang simula ng pagbabago panahon na para bumangon at paikutin muli ng tama ang mundo suliranin ng ating lipunan unti-unting magagawa ng paraan sa bagong siglo na ito ng ating mga buhay tayo'y magsama-sama bigyang liwanag ang daan maging gabay sa lipunang kailangan ng iyong kamay Halika na kapwa Pilipino Halika na kapwa Isko at Iska Taas kamay ang mga bagong bayani sa harap ng pagsubo Susuko, bigyan ng boses ang sigaw ng masa Ang bagong pag-asa ay mula sa'yo Sa sakip sa mamamayan Mula sa kahirapan Halika na Kapwa man dinigma Magtagumpay Kapwa isko at isga Taas kamay Ang mga bagong bayani Sa harap ng pagsubo Huwag kang susuko Bigyan ang boses Ang sigap ng masa Ang bagong pag-asa Sa iba kundi sa iyo at sa akin Nang simula ng pagbabago Panahon na para bumangon At paikutin muli ng tama ang mundo Suliranin ng ating lipunan Unti-unting magagawa ng paraan Sa bagong siglo na ito ng ating mga buhay tayo'y magsama-sama Bigyang liwanag ang daan Maging gabay sa lipunang kailangan ng iyong kamay Halika na kapwa Pilipino Halika na kapwa Isko at Iska Taas kamay ang mga bagong bayani Sa harap ng pagsubo Susuko, bigyan ng boses ang sigaw ng masa, ang bagong pag-asa ay mula sa iyo.
sandata ay servisyo sa sakip sa mamamayan mula sa kahirapan. Halika na, kapwa man dirigma, magtagumpay kapwa isko at piska. Alright, good afternoon from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Ako po si Regina Valerio and I will be your host for today's session. Welcome to the last installment of NSTP Online, ROTC, CWTS, and LTS in a remote learning setup. Isa itong collaboration ng mga NSTP units mula sa lahat ng UP constituent universities. UP Baguio, UP Cebu, UP Diliman, UP Los Banos, UP Manila, UP Mindanao, UP Open University at UP Visayas. Minabati rin namin ang ating mga participants mula sa iba't ibang panik ng Pilipinas at mundo through Zoom at sa UP Diliman NSPT YouTube live stream. Okay, bago po tayo magsimula sa ating programa, we would like to discuss a few house rules for our participants. Okay. First, we will prioritize questions gathered from the registration forms for our Q&A. For other questions, please use the Q&A tab for our webinar. You can upload other participants' questions by clicking the up button. Second, please indicate to whom your question is for. For example, to you, to Prof from UP Diliman, how is NSTP conducted in your unit? And last, certificates will be awarded for those who request for one and comply with minimum requirements through the webinar evaluation form. The link for the webinar evaluation form will be announced at the end of the session. Okay, on that note, let us now open today's webinar with the NSTP Director of UP Visayas, Assistant Professor Darius Salau. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Can you hear my audio? Yes po. All right, thank you po. The members of the UP and STP Tagyao, Sir Giovanni Gaspe, the Deputy Director of the NSRC UP Diliman, Sir Dennis Kilala, Director of NSTP UP Diliman, Ma'am Regina Valerio, our host for this afternoon, Ma'am Sarina Lopez and the rest of the team, much thanks for putting all this together. To all our participants and attendees, thank you for sharing your time with us this afternoon. LTS, or Literacy Training Service, endeavors as a program to train our students to become teachers of literacy and numeracy skills to school children, out of school youth, and other segments of society in need of their service. This is written in Republic Act 9163, the law that governs the NSTP and its corresponding implementing rules and regulations. This is a challenge to all of us, NSTP advocates. The initiative requires multiple levels of personal resource, 
from our students so that outcomes of engagement can become meaningful and lasting to inspire love and commitment in what they do and ensuring them to be sustainable can create very fulfilling results. Certainly, this can be overwhelming and challenging, yet also very rewarding. As NSTP instructors, we must try to create an environment where our students can realize that they too can be an important player who can influence and define a course of action beneficial to children in the communities. In the series, our primary goal is to share our experiences and the challenges of the remote learning approach to be able to inform, to formulate plans, and to inspire each other that despite the pandemic we are all currently in, we can still manage to be effective. We have with us several speakers from the different CUs of the university, and they will share the principles and methods that work in the respective LTS classes. We have Professor Doris Wilson of UP Baguio, Professor Charis Bautista of UP Visayas, Professor John Lorenzo Yambot of UP Los Professor Hazel Peclaro Montenco, and Professor Nerisa Sara of UP Tidemar. The stakes are high for us to create a movement to develop the love of learning, empower the community to invest time and energy on children, to demonstrate the importance of education in nation building, and eventually help shape a society of informed and psychologically mature citizens. Nasa kabataan ng pag-asa ng bayan at para maging totoo ito, ang edukasyon ay magiging instrumento sa paghubo. Maraming salamat po and let us listen to our contributors this afternoon. Maraming salamat, Professor Salakong. Now let us begin with our first presenter from UP Baguio. Doris Wilson is an assistant professor at UP Baguio. She earned her master's degree in media studies and research at Utrecht University in the Netherlands in 2018 and her bachelor's degree in speech communication at UP Baguio in 2013. She is also the director of the Ognayan ng Pahinigud Baguio, the official volunteer service program of the university. She served as NSTP facilitator and CWTS desk coordinator from 2013 to 2015, and as NSTP coordinator last academic year, 2019 to 2020. She is currently a member of the UP Baguio College of Arts and Communication NSTP team of facilitators. Let us all welcome Assistant Professor Doris Wilson. Magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Uh, so share ko yung aking uh, screen. Nakikita na ba siya? Yes pa. Uh. Ayan. Okay, my. So magandang hapon at ibabahagi ko sa inyo ngayong hapon ang naging karanasan ng College of Arts and Communication uh, ukol dun sa LTS Remote, remote Learning Setup at uh, bibigyan ko ng uh, uh, broad na, na pagbaybay doon sa naging karanasan. Uh, ng kolehiyo ganun din yung ilang example mula doon sa mismong klase na hinandle ko ngayong semestre. So, sa una, yung module implementation, uh, apat kami na nasa grupo ng NSTP facilitators sa College of Arts and Communication. Ito ay additional na uh, hindi siya matatawag na load kasi hindi siya counted doon sa teaching load uh, at honorarium ang basis ng uh, ibinigay sa mga facilitator. So, dalawa ang nakatutok sa LTS, isa para sa CWTS, at ako ay mixed dahil nasa akin lahat nung uh, LTS, CWTS, at ROTC sa unang bahagi ng NSTP. So, merong apat na NSTP classes at may average na 38 students per class. Uh, merong ginagamit na separate na VLE uh, page per facilitator noong first semester. Pero noong second semester, ang ginawa na dito ay per uh, component. So isang page sa VLE, uh, yung virtual learning environment na Moodle-based, at uh, naandon ang CWTS, isa para sa CWTS, isa para sa LTS. At uh, marami doon sa mga estudyante ang pumili 
sa LPS. So, 68% ng mga estudyante sa, sa kolehiyo ay nasa LPS. O ito ay 102 out of 150 students. May 45 na nasa CWTS at tatlo lamang sa ROTC. Ang kolehiyo ay uh, kinapapalubuan ng mga estudyante na kumukuha ng BA Communication, BA Language and Literature, BA Fine Arts, at uh, Certificate in Fine Arts. Ito yung itsura ng uh, sample ng BLE doon sa na ginagamit namin. At ang mode nito, nung first semester ay mostly asynchronous. Uh, merong mga activities na, hin na hindi binibigyan ng grado. Ito ay mga individual work uh, na merong mga forum na sasagutan sila. Uh, Jamboard kung saan nagbibigay sila ng mga komento doon sa mga pinupost doon. Uh, Google Form Survey. Ganun din yung panunood ng mga films at videos na related dun sa topiko at peer evaluation. Ang graded requirements ay group work na nakapaloob din sa uh, VLE. Isang malaking tulong sa amin sa UP Baguio na mayroong existing na, na modules na ginagamit na, na nagawa noong 2014. At sa panahong ito ng uh, delivery, in-update namin yung ilan doon sa mga existing na NSTP modules. So sa common modules, ang mga topiko na, uh, na, uh, na talakay dito ay yung introduction or yung orientation sa NSTP program, citizenship, drug education, disaster awareness, preparedness and management, environmental awareness, at saka national security concerns. Um, kung doon sa modules, ang medyo nagbago dito ay yung doon sa module ng national security uh, concerns kasi doon sa unang uh, 2014 na version ng module, magkasama yung uh, usapin tungkol sa peace and security pero dito nagkahiwalay. Um, so nagkaroon ng pagbabago doon sa module na ito ay mula sa CHED, yung kanilang uh, revised no, na NSTP module framework na amin ding sinundan. So dito meron ng common modules at meron ding specific Uh, modules at merong optional modules. Hindi na namin isinagawa ang optional modules sa panahon nito. So sa specific modules, uh, naandito ang self and society at ang bago na module na ginawan din namin ng uh, uh, module no, sa panahon ito ay yung volunteerism. Hindi na namin natapos yung doon sa iba pang bahagi at ito ay sinimula namin noong second semester yung literacy and uh, numeracy para dun sa mga may proyektong tutorials. And then yung community-based management na mas nag-focus kami sa needs assessment at project planning. At meron din kami idinagdag na storytelling workshop para dun sa mga may proyekto ng uh, storytelling. So sa mga requirements sa first semester, ito yung mga naging batayan dun sa pagkuha nila ng grade kasi uh, computed na yung grade nila no, na uh, numerical, hindi na lang siya pass or fail. No? So, 40% ng grade ay nanggaling dun sa mga output nila doon sa apat na modules at yung uh, kalakang bahagi ay nandun sa SWOT. Ito ay yung community profile at saka yung uh, pag-assess nila ng kanilang mga kakayahan at yung uh, paghahanda nila doon sa gagawin nilang proyekto. So, it, ilan ito dun sa mga examples ng mga ginawa nila? So sa citizenship, ang pinaka uh, naging requirement nila ay yung pagbuo ng directory ng youth organizations at yung mga programa ng mga organizations na to. So lima kada grupo yung kanilang ginawa ng directory. Sa drug education, ito yung mga examples, uh, poster making. So nagkataon na nasa uh, class na hinahandle ko ang mga fine arts. So ganyan yung kanilang mga output. Uh, sa environment, uh, letter writing sa mga companies ang kanilang ginawa. And then sa national security part, critical paper on the national security plan ang kanilang uh, isinagawa. So dun sa mga proposals naman, uh, kung sa kabuuan, dun sa kolehiyo, merong 19 na LTS groups at merong 5 to 7 na members sa bawat group. Dalawa yung main 
na uh, klase ng proyekto na isinagawa sa kolehiyo. So yung una ay ang tutorial services uh, para dun sa high school literature. At pangalawa ay reading through storytelling videos. So magbibigay ako ng ilang example doon sa um, ginawa, no? doon sa reading through storytelling. Kasi doon sa hinandle ko, mas ito yung naging focus ng LPS. So limang group sila na gumawa nito. Ito ay in partnership with Ognay ng Pahinungod Baguio. Nung bago nagkaroon ng pandemya, meron ng ganitong proyekto na face-to-face. -face. At uh, uh, kapartner din ang pahinungod sa pagsasagawa nito. So ito ay nakabase dun sa paggamit ng mga kwento para turuan na magbasa yung mga nasa uh, grades 2 to 3 ng mga estudyante. So merong sinaservice na sang school na malapit sa UP Baguio, ito yung Quezon Elementary School. So bago nagsimula yung kanilang proyekto, nagkaroon ng training uh, ng storytelling workshop, Ito ay tatlong oras na workshop via Zoom. Ito yung paggamit ng boses at ng katawan sa storytelling. Pamimili ng uh, material na gagamitin at paghahanda ng material para dun sa performance ng storytelling. So sila, sa mga groups nila, sila yung pumili kung anong mga kwento ang kanilang uh, gagamitin. At sila rin yung nagplano per group. At uh, bago na aprubahan, kailangan nilang mag-submit no ng project plan na kinapapaloban ng kanilang uh, background no nung, nung nung kwento at nung ano yung gusto nilang mangyari no uh, yung signer yung site investigation and needs assessment uh, ito ay uh, pag-weigh no kung ano yung kailangan doon sa uh, sa school uh, yung SWOT no yung kakayahan nila at yung mga factors no na pwedeng makaapekto doon sa kanila implementation so project details no yung ano na yung pinaplano nila doon rational mechanics ano yung mga resources na kailangan nila taskings at yung calendar of activities nila so nung uh, na aprubahan na yon no na finalize yung kanilang project plan uh, merong sinagawa no ng mga group consultation sa facilitator at yung pagkritik ng draft nila ng videos so Bawat grupo ay nagsagawa no ng kanilang proyekto no at uh, bawat buwan meron din silang isinasubmit na weekly reflection notes so ikinokompile nila yon yung kanilang weekly reflection notes at sinasubmit nila every month at meron din silang monthly na peer evaluation and then uh, bago mag-end no yung semester ay merong finalization ng videos at yung pag quality check Ang mga videos, no, ang ilan dito ay na-post na doon sa page ng pahinungod at ito ay isesend din doon sa, ang kopya nito ay bibigay din doon sa partner school. Ayan. So doon sa second semester, ang naging uh, criteria naman namin, 40% ay manggagaling doon sa proposal nila, yung kanilang peer evaluation at reflection. At yung 60% ay manggagaling doon sa post-implementation report nila na kayo napapaluban nung uh, description ng kanilang proyekto, yung aktual na calendar, yung highlights ng kanilang proyekto, at yung assessment points nila. At uh, required sila na dalawang videos per group ang kanilang isubmit para doon sa kanilang project. Ayan. So ito yung example nung na-post no, doon sa uh, kanilang proyekto. Magandang araw mga bata! Kami ay mga estudyante ng Universidad ng Pilipinas, Baguio. At ngayong araw ay sasamahan namin kayong magbasa ng isang maikling kwento. Ang aklat na ating babasahin ay may pamagat na Isang Metro. Ito ay isang kwentong pambata ukol sa COVID-19. Ang isang metro ay sinulat ni Kate Del Rosario. Ang original na guhit ay gawa ni Dandine Espina. Samantala, ang mga guhit sa bersyong ito ay gawa naman ni Pearl Julia Sibug. Bago tayo magsimula, kailangan nating makinig ng mabuti at tandaan ang mga importanteng salita na mahanap sa kwento. Handa na ba kayo mga bata? Magaling! Tara, simulan na natin! Kaano 
ba kalayo ang isang metro, nanay? Tanong ni Ella kay Aling Marie isang umaga. Bakit mo naman ang tanong, anak? Sagot ni Aling Marie habang naghahanda ng almusal. Narinig ko po kasi sa balita na kailangan daw po isang... Tayong bumati at makipaglaro nating sundo. Alalahanin muna natin ang mga magagandang aral na napulot natin mula sa isang metro. Dapat nating sundin ang mga health protocols tulad ng pananatili sa bahay at palagi ang paghuhugas ng kamay habang may community quarantine upang makaiwas sa COVID-19. Tulad ni Ella, maaari pa rin tayong bumati at makipaglaro sa ating mga kaibigan o kapamilya habang inoobserba ang social distancing na isang metro. Pinapaalala rin ng kwento na ito na mahalagang panatilihin ang kalinisan sa katawan at hindi gawing hadlang ang isang metro para panatilihin ang ating koneksyon sa ating mga mahal sa buhay. Have you ever had a bad day? Me too! But during those bad days, we should all remember to try to look at the bright side whenever we can. This is the story, Slay Negative, Light in Life, written and illustrated by Athene Marzan. Life is hard, harder than an unbreakable rock. And life makes you experience dark, rock-hard days. Day okay, so, uh, pwede siya mapanood sa page ng Pahinungod, no? Medyo mahaba yung... Uh, video. So, so challenges, uh, kalakhan ay nakaranas ng technical difficulties, no? uh, yung paggawa ng animation at ng illustration kasi kailangan nilang gumawa ng mga studies nila para dun sa iniisip nila na, uh, na drawings. No? Uh, internet accessibility, may, merong mga nagka-problema, lalo na sa uploading ng videos. Uh, power outages, at yung video editing equipment no yung yung kakayahan nila ng mga laptops na gamit nila para doon sa um, editing uh, kasama rin dito na nabanggit nila is yung time constraints kasi uh, yung yung uh, oras na ginugol nila para doon sa pag-edit ng video ay kumain din ng ng oras no um, gayon din yung yung pag-uulit ng kanilang mga uh, uh, yung sa voice over no para mas maging maayos at yung pagbubuo na mismo nung mga uh, iba't ibang parts no kasi iba yung nag uh, iba yung naka-assign para doon sa voice over iba yung nag uh, the drawing iba yung nag uh, i-edit no so yan uh, merong mga personal doubts and confusion doon sa kung paano na nga ba mabubuo yung kanilang uh, proyekto nung una hindi pa nila ma-imagine kung ano na yung magiging itsura nung kanilang uh, storytelling videos. Pero nung uh, nabuo na nila, you know, naging masaya naman sila no? at makikita doon sa highlights na sinasabi nila. No? At nakita nila na yung mga proyektong ito uh, took advantage of their strengths. No? Kasi uh, ang mga nasa uh, grupo ay karamihan nasa fine arts at nasa BA communication courses. So uh, sa mga BA communication courses, meron silang Uh, kurso kaugnay sa uh, oral interpretation of literature at nagamit nila dito at yung mga nasa fine arts naman ay dun sa mga drawings at sa animation. So they had fun putting the story together and each member contributed to the project. So naging malaking tulong yung tasking nila para mas malinaw kung ano yung trabaho ng bawat isa. So ilan ito dun sa mga quotes no? dun sa, based dun sa reports na binigay nila. So online NSTP It was definitely not an easy ride. Although I wish we could have been more hands-on, I have to say that I really appreciated the efforts everyone has put into this semester. I am more than sure I will take this with me in the future. It was very challenging and with great experience to produce an output for children out there while working with group mates from different places. It taught me how to adjust and how to work on my own pacing without being a burden to the group. I really hope that we'll be able to finish this on time <laughs> yung mga iba pa na nagahabwal because I'm really tired. My group mates gave their insights for the implementation report. I am now adding details into it and trying to finish it before June 18th. I am really thankful to my group mates for their work. Though there were times that confusion and miscommunication happened, we still tried to understand and be 
consider it. And despite the online setup, I was able to meet new people and collaborate with them. NSTP LTS made me realize the importance of teamwork and communication in finishing the requirements we needed for the course. Moreover, I'm happy that we contributed to the education of students who will watch our video presentation. So maraming salamat po. Yun po yung aming um, ibabahagi mula sa NSTP College of Arts and Communication. Maraming salamat po, Professor Wilson. Now we would like to present our speaker with a certificate of appreciation. The National Service Training Program, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, University of the Philippines, Diliman, presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Assistant Professor Doris Wilson for their active participation as a resource person in the NSTP Online, ROTC, CWTS, and LTS in a remote learning setup, given this 27th day of July, 2021, via Zoom, signed by Dennis Kilala, the Director of NSTP, UP Diliman, and Giovanni Francis A. Ligaspi, the Deputy Director of NSRC, UP Diliman. Thank you once again to Professor Wilson. Now, we would like to remind our participants in Zoom and YouTube Live that we will have a Q&A session later. Please send in your questions and our guest speakers will answer them later. Okay, okay for our se second speaker, mula naman po sa UP Visayas, Ms. Charis em Emeline Bautista has handled the UP Visayas NSTP of the Iloilo City Campus for the past five semesters, CWTS for the first three, and LTS for the last two. She chose to handle LTS this school year despite not having any formal education units because of the much felt need of basic education students for guidance in the current modular setup. An instructor of the UP Visayas College of Management specializing in operations management and a certified public accountant by profession. She drew on her project management experience to equip students to manage their own literacy projects. Let us all welcome Ms. Therese Emeline Bautista. Good afternoon, everyone. So let me just um, share my screen. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, a windy afternoon here in uh, Western Visayas. So I'd like to start with a Filipino version of a proverb. I believe that it takes a barangay to produce a lifelong learner. I believe that as LTS teachers, this is the essence of our work, to raise teachers from student advocates of literacy who will be part of the core that also raises other lifelong learners. I am tasked to share the strategies of the UPV LTS program uh, from last school year. But before I do that, I would like to give a short background on it. So we began our first semester with 823 students and during the semester we, we have the common module first before the uh, students select among the three components and then before the common module ends, uh, representatives from the three components campaign for students to select a component and then they fill in a Google form to signify their choice. So pre-COVID, the LTS component was offered only in the Miyagao campus, while only ROTC and CWTS were offered for the city campus. So since the creation of the community service proposal was a major requirement for the first semester, students are asked to enroll under the same instructors that they have in the specific component to ensure the continuity of their project proposals. So pre-COVID, LTS students adopt a barangay in the municipality of Mekau and cater to the needs of the learning students there by offering tutorial services. So by the second semester of last school year, 54% or 437 of the university's 813 NSTP students had selected LDS as their component of choice and thus we have um, LTS class sizes ranging from 30 to 55 uh, 
with seven LDS coordinators. So preparations pre-semester began with attending the CHET's webinar on series on transitioning the delivery of NSTP to the, to the flexible learning mode, as well as attending the system's course redesign and uh, the UPV LMS team also held an orientation for all teaching departments for the use of the Moodle-based LMS of UP Visayas. So we also prepared our course guide, uh, our course packs rather, composed of, of uh, the course guide, study guide, and of course curated um, videos and articles for our multisensory learners. So the UPV uses Moodle as its learning management system. However, I also use uh, the Google Classroom site in case our server goes down. So during the chat webinar on flexible learning, it was noted that the chat gave a bit of flexibility um, to higher education students. I believe Professor Wilson also flashed the, the changes to the curriculum. Okay. And then for the common module, we, re we still retain the same common module topics we used in the previous academic years. So this is just a few of the slides of our LDS campaign, but I used mostly the data from the PISA statistics that used 2018 data, but were released in 2020 to, to tap into um, the, the volunteer spirit that is already in our first year students uh, to become student volunteers and advocates for literacy. So during a quick survey, uh, I, I noticed that a lot of students were hesitant because they felt that they were not really um, equipped um, to, to, teach, to teach children. But then we uh, reassured them that the, the LTS component does not necessarily define learners as children only, but they can also cater to out-of-school youth and uh, other segments of society. So given also the, uh, the, the bit of flexibility granted by the CHED for the, the curriculum of the NSTP, the, LS, the LTS cluster decided on these topics to be taken up for the first and second semester. So we have um, the background, the literacy, and the state of Philipp the Philippine educational system, learning and cognitive milestones. So they are ready to um, to recognize uh, whether their learners uh, or that they intend to shoot or have already reached this principles of effective teaching and uh, then they are tasked to create their project proposals. So for their LTS2 modules, we taught them basic uh, project management and educational needs assessment. And then they also submitted uh, project uh, their, their project implementation supporting documentation. Some submitted um, time lapse videos, some submitted pictures, and some uh, made vlogs of their entire uh, project implementation experience. And then I had my class uh, submit periodic reflections. And uh, eventually, uh, uh, the, their final project rather was a creative reflection of their whole LDS experience. So for their uh, personal reflection, I consider these, um, these six uh, reflections as milestones in their project proposal uh, formula and formulation and implementation. So for um, their project proposals, the students created 40 hours worth of literacy themed community service project, such as the individual tutoring of public or private school elementary, junior high, and senior high students. And they, uh, some of them assisted in checking the modules of public uh, school teachers, although I did tell them that uh, the, the bulk of their 40 are um, community service project should be the, the, the tutoring part and not just the, the, the assisting, the, the checking. Okay, and some of them also organized and held webinars for voters education, which of course is also a type of, of literacy that uh, we need. So to give you to give you a preview of how one of our students conducted her LDS project, I will be playing her creative reflection slide. Sorry. Hello, amazing people! Welcome to another episode of Ice Dios. Today, I will be sharing with you my LTS journey.
For this project, I did an exclusive learner-based face-to-face tutoring to help chosen senior high school students of my barangay to manage their home education, assist them as they learn, and prepare themselves for college entry. The sessions were conducted at their house porch with proper social distancing and strict implementation of safety health protocols. Deciding who will be the learners for this project was a tough choice since there are quite a lot of senior high school students in our area in need of assistance. It was disappointing that I was not able to help more students due to the limiting situations, for it would have been a good opportunity for these students to reach their needed support. However, it is in our best interest to prioritize safety. Sorry. For this reason that I chose the most accessible students for my project, my brother and two closest neighbors. They're the ones who always seek my help and I believe this will be a great venue for me to focus on helping them out with their studies. All three of them are of the same age group and are currently in senior high school. They also study in the same school which makes it easier for me to facilitate their learning. A pretest post test method was done to assess their current knowledge on the basic subjects. The test included questions of different difficulty levels, from basic concepts to more complicated ones. Analyzing the results enabled me to determine their current level of knowledge and helped me to match the goals to address the students' individual needs and evaluate their effectiveness. This project also aimed to help them prepare for college entrance examinations as some schools continue to require students to take the test. Spending time with them gave me the chance to get to know them better, forming a more personal relationship with them. As they learned from my lessons, I likewise learned a lot from them. We uncovered interesting topics together as we bonded over our similarities and differences. I made sure not to exhaust them with the classes since I wanted them to have fun learning. Towards the end of my project, they became more comfortable learning with me that they no longer hesitate in seeking my help. My motivation for this project was to encourage my students to reach their goals and give hope that this setup is not the end, but rather a means to one. They deserve a quality education and they should never be deprived of the opportunity for such. Back when there were still face-to-face classes, I always find teaching others fun. I would willingly tutor my classmates in some topics they find hard. Teachers really have a noble job. It is hard to imagine their exhaustion doing all course materials, grading all students' outputs and exams, and creating reports for the semester worth activities. I know the 40-hour experience I had was nowhere near the struggles of a real teacher. The entire LTS experience itself was unforgettable. Though there were times when I questioned whether choosing LTS was right for me, there were more times where I was happy I did. Not only did I acquire first-hand experience as a teacher, but it also taught me concepts that were beyond what I could learn in books. Knowledge is more powerful when shared. Teaching others does not make you less knowledgeable. Rather, it makes you wiser from learning things from other people. And that was my LTS journey. I hope you learned something from it. And if you have any more ideas, don't hesitate to comment down below. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up, share, and subscribe button. This is Eliza reminding you to stay safe, be at home, and practice social distancing. Thank you for watching! So there. So uh, for the student feedback, um, it, it included their willingness to complete the 40 hours of literacy projects. However, some were beset with difficulties uh, such as internet connectivity, power out outages, and personal difficulties such as their family acquiring um, the COVID-19 or time management as some students still take on full-time jobs to help with family expenses. So in my class, I also asked the students, uh, about the criticism on LTS or CWTS being less effective in developing a sense of voluntarism and, nas and nationalism in Filipino youth. But one answer stood out to me. She shared that the LTS will only be effective if the student carries out the project wholeheartedly and not for compliance only. So I believe as an LTS teacher, it is an art to be able to transfer this passion of helping others learn 
uh, to future LDS students. So I also asked the, uh, my students if they were open to the possibility of teaching in the future, as I had in mind the Gurong Pahinungod program of the system that was implemented several years ago. However, um, out of 54 students in my class, only two or three were open to teaching, uh, which is a bit unexplainable on my part because they have been groomed since senior high school to become business leaders and CPAs. So some of the challenges for this school year included uh, the alignment with the DepEd school calendar since the project proposal is more of a tutoring type. Um, some students started tutoring uh, in March when our uh, semester began, but uh, it was at this month that some of the basic education schools were already in the process of wrapping up for the school year. So of course we have um, the, the usual difficulties of internet connectivity, power outages, uh, personal difficulties, and uh, we also had a tricky time in monitoring and verifying actual time spent by the students in project implementation because I, I took it personally to, to have them do 40 hours uh, because I was a bit afraid that, um, um, you know, eventually the, 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 the CHED might need to look into whether the 54 hours as prescribed to, by law was um, uh, what was to be really enforced. Yeah, and so uh, when we ask for photo evidence, sometimes students can, can cheat taking pictures and um, not all students have the capacity to create and upload a time-lapse video of their tutorial session. So like what Eliza did, um, she compiled some of her time-lapse videos in order to come up with her creative reflection. So to counter this, we always remind our students that uh, more than being NSTP students or more than NSTP being another subject to submit requirements, they are scholars ng bayan and that as early as their first year in college, they can serve the people. So one reminder I use also in my classes is that um, nobody, a corrupt uh, per person does not suddenly wake up and has uh, this desire to, to steal millions of pesos from, from somewhere. But it starts with the little um, cheating and lies. So so I, I hope that, uh, I'm, I'm sure that um, our students uh, uh, are very much aware of the responsibility that accompanies the privilege of being a scholar. So um, the last challenge is actually a challenge to myself and my cluster, my LDS cluster mates in UPV and my LDS, uh, my future LDS students rather. So the World Economic Forum in its 2015 new vision for education proposes 16 skills to be mastered to become lifelong learners. So um, there's the uh, misconception that literacy is only about numbers or, or letters, but uh, I believe that uh, we have the capacity to build uh, lifelong learners uh, who will also in turn teach um, learners around them to be lifelong learners as well. So depending on the varied and fast changing health protocols in the areas where our students are in, uh, I will be challenging them to consider creating and proposing projects in these um, foundational literacies, uh, competencies, and character qualities, um, not only in Iloilo, but across the nation. So it takes a barangay of teachers and tutors to, to produce lifelong learners and more so to produce globally competitive lifelong learners. So in this pandemic where learning is transmitted mostly through screens, we will continue to work to raise lifelong learners uh, who will also raise more lifelong learners uh, through the LDS of the, the UPV and STP. So I would also like to thank my LDS cluster mates and our director, Professor Darius Salaom, who also gave the uh, opening remarks earlier for your support in our task of equipping Filipino students through the UPV LTS component. So thank you, everyone, and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Professor Bautista, for your presentation. Um, same for with um, Professor Wilson, and the class had to recalibrate the requirements para maging flexible and can accommodate 
new students. And then I like I really like the project na yung student po is tutoring. Tutoring po yung mga, mga students na kailangan ng help. Kasi it's true na nowadays, um, madami nahihirapan through uh, learning through sa screen. So dapat ay kit, uh, kita na yung classmates na and natututo uh, sila pag face-to-face. So, uh, it's, uh, ano po, um, the Twitter project was great for students who need help with their studies, especially during the pandemic. And I also like, when, uh, it feels so feeling when you carry a project with passion, rather than feeling na this is just for a grade. So, para to, uh, to raise uh, lifelong learners, kailangan passionate po tayo in learning. So, thank you, po, Professor Bautista. We would like to present our second speaker with the Certificate of Appreciation the National Service Training Program, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, University of the Phil- Philippine Philippines, presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Ms. Therese Emeline Bautista for their active participation as a resource person in the NSTP Online, ROTC, CWTS, and LTS in a remote learning setup, given this 27th day of July 2021 via Zoom, signed by Dan Silala, the Director of NSTP UT Diliman, and Giovanni Francis Iligaspi, the Deputy Director of NSRC UT Diliman. Thank you once again to Ms. Charisse. Thank you again. Good afternoon. <laughs> Uh, again, a reminder to our participants on Zoom and YouTube Live, if you have any questions or comments about the presentations of Professor Wilson and uh, Mr. Dees, you can use the chat box on YouTube or the Q&A button here on Zoom. Okay, we are halfway through the webinar. <laughs> okay po ba tayo, guys? <laughs> so our next speaker will be from Yupilos Banyos. John Lorenzo Yambot is an assistant professor at the Institute of Statistics, College of Arts and Sciences in UP Los Banos. Aside from teaching an undergraduate statistics courses, he has been teaching NSTP, CWTS, and LTS components since 2013. Professor Yambot finished his Bachelor of Science degree in Statistics and Master of Science degree in Statistics with a cognate in Information Technology in UP Los Banos. In 2016, he was awarded as the UPLB Outstanding Teacher for the Physical Sciences, Junior Faculty category. Let us all welcome Assistant Professor John Lorenzo Yambot. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. I'm Enzo Yambot from the Institute of Statistics, College of Arts and Sciences, UP Los Baños. I have been teaching the NSTP every semester since 2013. Di ko na po mabilang kung ilang semestre na, but the only time I wasn't able to teach NSTP was when I had to take a study leave for one semester to finish my master's. Well, Thanks to my mentors from the CAS NSTP, they ignited the spirit of volunteerism and passion in effectively facilitating my NSTP classes every semester. I'd like to begin my presentation by sharing the response of one of my students in the self-introduction forum of the NSTP2 class that I handled last first semester. In the said forum, Aside from introducing themselves, I also asked them to share with the class a brief story about the teacher who inspired them to become who they are today. One of my students said that it was his high school social studies or history teacher who inspired him to become who he is today. Sabi niya, he somehow managed to turn my most hated subject into a somewhat enjoyable class. A very relatable teacher who would give us a lot of life advice, all of which have helped me become who I am today. It definitely isn't easy being a teacher, but he never once complained, nor let us know of his hardships, unlike some of the teachers I got. You can tell he was very passionate for teaching, which is probably why a lot of us liked the class, even though we hated the subject. No matter how boring the actual topic is, Just with his passion, 
he managed to pull us in and grab our attention. I want to live my life doing something I'm passionate about. And that's probably the most important thing that this teacher has taught me. Well, I guess most of us, if not all of us, share the same story. I even shared to my students that it was my high school statistics teacher who inspired me to become who I am today. She made statistics enjoyable and practical. So obviously, this influenced me to choose a career in statistics. I did the same activity with my NSTP1 students last semester, and as I go on reading their responses, it made me realize that indeed, we see teachers or literacy workers in general as committed to their students and students' learning. Teachers matter. They are members of a broader community. These are the things that I expected my students to realize at the end of the simple activity or even at the end of the semester. Fortunately, when I was reading my NSTP LTS students' reflective learning journals, I think that this goal has been achieved. I think my students became prepared to become literacy workers in the future. One of my students said that NSTP2 has definitely helped me to become more adaptive, considerate, and driven to apply myself in the best way I can to do the task of learning, and should the opportunities arrive of teaching and sharing knowledge and inspiration. In the duration of this course, I have refined myself skills in design, in writing, and in working with others remotely. This time, I would like to share how the LTS program was implemented in our college during the past two semesters. In UPLB, NSTP1 is usually offered every second semester, while NSTP2 is offered every first semester. First, for the learning resources, we have prepared discussion handouts that are based on the NSTP1 modules of UPLB Ugnayan ng Pahinungod. The NSTP teaching staff of UPLB has been using these modules as references ever since the facilitation of NSTP was decentralized to the colleges. These discussion handouts were supplemented with online videos and articles. Now for offline students, we have downloaded these videos and articles and have them copied in a flash drive for student use. Last semester, the UPLB NSTP office through the initiatives of the NSTP Office of the College of Forestry and Natural Resources have organized webinars for the common module phase of NSTP1. These webinars were broadcasted through Facebook. So all of these learning resources for NSTP, the discussion handouts, the supplementary videos and articles, and the webinars were accessed by the students using a learning management system such as Google Classroom, Moodle, and Canvas. Now for the learning assessment, we designed individual and or group activities for each module. Our strategy in the group activities is to appropriately combine students with and without reliable access to technology in a single group. This strategic composition ensured that each group will not be limited by technological factors to be able to deliver the needed output. Also, to encourage a greater level of interaction in the class, we held several discussion fora on relevant topics. And finally, every week, we ask our students to document their personal experiences in the learning process through the Reflective Learning Journal. So the students simply need to answer three questions. Number one, what did I learn? Number two, what went well and why? And number three, what could I have done better? Now, aside from the activities mentioned earlier, students were also assessed based on these major requirements. For NSTP1, the major requirements are the midterm exam for the common module phase, 
and the literacy project proposal and teaching demonstration for the LTS phase. In the previous semester, we were not able to hold the teaching demonstration since this is a synchronous graded assessment activity. So later, I'll talk about how we implemented these activities last semester or even in the past two semesters. Meanwhile, for NSTP2, the major requirement is the implementation of a literacy project. Now, our college had a different experience with NSTP2 last first semester because of the shortened semesters. We offered NSTP2 last first semester as a combination of both NSTP1 component phase and NSTP2 since we were not able to finish NSTP1 the semester before that. So that's second semester academic year 2019-2020. Also, the events last first semester brought us to a decision to just require our students to submit a literacy project proposal instead of the actual implementation of the project. Now this time, I will share some of the activities that we conducted in NSTP1. So let's start with the common module phase. The UPLD NSTP common module phase covers the following topics. In the remote learning mode, we have allotted seven weeks for the common module phase that includes a major assessment activity, which is the midterm exam. Now, in a face-to-face -face scenario, what we normally do is to invite resource persons to share their knowledge and experiences with these topics. Then, the FICs would process and synthesize the learning of the students in these lecture discussions through a series of activities. Now, for the remote learning mode, we still did the same approach, except that the lecture discussions were now done through a series of webinars, which I have mentioned earlier. Now, aside from this online discussions, we also prepared discussion handouts and other multimedia materials as supplementary learning resources. So I'm sure most of you, if not all, would agree that the remote learning mode has been very challenging, not only to us teachers, but also to our students. So some of them would say that the volume of activities in this learning mode is much more than what they usually get in a face-to-face -face setup. So as a teacher, a personal question that bothered me, especially in the remote learning mode, is how can I make learning more relevant to my students? I thought that making learning more relevant and relatable to my students is very essential in a course like NSTP, which is expected to inculcate the values of volunteerism and service to the nation among our students. So an approach that we did was to some sort of personalize the activities in this course. For example, as a synthesis activity for the module on citizenship training, we asked our students to answer this question. What are your duties as a Filipino citizen and as a member of your community, specifically your hometown? So we expected that our students would have already spent a lot of time in their homes because of the pandemic. So we thought that they have already observed a lot about their community than before when they were away from their hometown. Kumbaga, mas nakilala nila yung community nila ngayon dahil sa mga naging karanasan nila dahil sa pandemya nito. This activity was actually inspired from the book by attorney Alex Laxon entitled 12 Little Things Every Filipino Can Do to Help Our Country. Next, for the module on disaster risk reduction and management, we came up with an activity inspired by the I Am Ready public service campaign of the GMA Network. Again, we personalized this activity by asking our students to look for common household items. 
they should be able to think of other ways to repurpose these items as essential items to prepare for or respond to emergencies. So as you can see from the screenshots, we implemented this activity through a discussion forum wherein students can exchange ideas and learn from each other's responses and experiences. Maging ako po kahit ilang emergency trainings na ang aking nasalihan, magugulat at matutuwa ka pa din sa pagiging resourceful ng ating mga estudyante. Next, for the module on environmental protection, we asked our students to calculate their household's carbon footprint. I found this website wherein they will be asked to provide information on their household's daily activities. So, alimbawa po, meron ba silang TV at ilan yung TV nila? Tapos, tinatanggal ba nila yung sa pagkakasaksak yung TV pag hindi na ginagamit? And these questions would repeat for other household appliances like microwave oven, aircon, electric fan. So iba pa pong tanong ay meron ba silang sasakyan at gaano kadalas nila ito ginagamit? Gaano kadami yung food wastes nila? So gaano kadami yung mga natatapon nilang basura, yung mga nabubulok at hindi nabubulok? At iba pang mga tanong tungkol sa kanilang mga pangkaraniwang gawain sa bahay. Now, for this activity, we asked the students to share a screenshot of the results of the Household Carbon Footprint Calculator. Then, they were asked to give at least five things they plan to do to reduce their household's carbon footprint. It was actually satisfying to read the responses of the students since I have observed that they have become more conscious now about their daily activities and how this series of activities can either help or harm our environment. So again, this is again some sort of personalizing the activities in NSPP. The final activity in the common module phase is the midterm exam. To be honest, the CAS NSTP teaching staff had to schedule several meetings and consultations to discuss how to implement the midterm exam because in a face-to-face -face setup, we would just administer the traditional pen and paper type of exam. So what we came up is for the previous semester, we have decided to ask our students to create a multimedia material that synthesizes their learnings about the topics in the common module phase of NSTP-1. So the students have the freedom to choose to create an infographic, a video, podcast, or a photo essay. The material should show what they have learned about the topics and what they realized after the common module phase of NSTP-1. So of course, there were guidelines and rubrics before uh, this midterm exam was released for the students. Now, as I have mentioned earlier, after seven weeks, we will now proceed or we proceeded with the component phase of NSTP-1. This time, let's talk about the implementation of the LTS-1 modules in the remote learning setup. The NSTP-1 LTS in UPLB contains seven modules designed to be administered in the remaining nine weeks of the semester. So this includes the major requirement of the NSTP-1 component phase, which is the literacy project proposal. Now, similar with the common module phase, we design personalized activities for the component phase that will help them develop their competencies as eventual literacy workers. Also, what is unique in LTS is that the assessments were designed in such a way that the activities would contribute in building up their literacy project proposal. As an introductory activity in LTS, we explored the literacy situation in the Philippines. In the original LTS-1 module, the suggested motivational activity is watching a movie 
specifically the movie Abacada Ina. So since we are in a different setup, and considering that some students may not be able to play a two-hour video given their internet connection, we explored other materials that will enable our students to look at literacy with a critical active mindset because that's the objective of giving our students a literacy situation there. So students must be able to realize the interconnection of literacy in oneself, family, community, the nation, and even the whole world. So for the previous semester, we selected this eyewitness documentary by Cara David entitled Pag-asa sa Pagbasa. There are two versions of this documentary. One is a YouTube video and the other one is an online article. Now aside from this, there are a rich amount of available resources for the literacy situation of our country. You can even ask our students to explore data related about this and report to the class their findings about this study. Next, for the module on visual communication media for facilitating literacy, we asked our students to design materials in the new normal. That is looking for common household items, again, that can be repurposed this time as an educational material. So what you are seeing now is an output from one of my students. So as you can see, he used a ball and a flashlight to show the different faces of the moon. The final major requirement in NSTP1 is the literacy project proposal. In the previous semesters, our students have proposed different projects implemented in various learning modalities. Some are intended to be implemented using modular or distance learning, while some are intended for homeschooling. So, halimbawa po, yung proyekto ay para sa kanilang mga kapatid, pinsan, pamangkin, o kasama na rin yung mga kapitbahay. And there are projects based on curricular modules, such as topics on basic mathematics and science, some are based on non-curricular modules such as time management skills and environment literacy. Some students also took advantage of the resources available online, such as this web platform designed to teach students about coding logic and basic programming. This online tool is called Scratch, and my students developed a module based on this beginner-friendly programming environment. Lastly, the UPLB College of Engineering and Agro-Industrial Technology created a website that serves as a compilation of online resources developed by their NSTP, CWTS, and LTS students. The website is called Beyond Four Corners, a platform that collates materials from various individuals who volunteered to develop modules that will be available online. So it aims to improve literacy and contribute to the general welfare of the public. And as you can see, most of the contents that you'll find here are volunteer work of NSTP students from the College of Engineering and Agro-Industrial Technology and other partner institutions. Now, let me conclude my presentation with some facilitation tips that I personally wrote based on my remote teaching experiences in NSTP over the past two semesters. First, it is very important to set the parameters at the start of the semester. What materials, equipment, and other resources could your students use or access? What I did is to let my students answer a learner information sheet at the start of the semester for me to assess the level of technological access of my students. Then it doesn't end there. At the middle of the semester, I asked again each of my students if they still have the same level of access to the learning resources 
that they identified at the beginning of the semester. I also used this as an opportunity to ask my students if they can still attend synchronous sessions or if they have any concerns that they would like to raise regarding the learning setup. Second is, PM is the key. Strengthen the connection and interaction with your students online. As much as possible, I integrated icebreaker activities during my synchronous sessions so that students would still have a reason to look forward to these sessions live rather than wait for the recordings. Another strategy that I did in the past semesters was to always ask my students personal questions so that somehow I would get to know them even in the virtual setup. So para po bang kwentuhan? So for example, at the start of every academic week, aside from saying that, oh, I have already uploaded the learning resources, please check them, I would tell them to know if, to let me know if they can access the learning resources by replying to my message with the place in Los Baños that they miss the most. So in another week, I asked them to reply to my message by sharing their childhood ambition. So I thought that by doing this kind of strategy, our communication in the group chat would always be dynamic. So hindi lang siya laging one way. Nako lang lagi yung nagsasalita doon sa group chat. So there is always an interaction between me and my students. Third, in order to reduce cheating, reserve questions that can be easily googled for ungraded assessments. So as you have seen in the sample activities that I have shared, we have personalized the activities so it will be easier to spot whether there was some form of cheating. Fourth, in the discussion forum, design questions that generate engaging discussions. So, iwasan po natin yung mga tanong na iisa lang yung tamang sagot. So, select questions that are expected to be different based on individual students' experiences. And finally, Consider your students' preferences and experiences for the literacy project proposal. So what issue or problem do they deeply care for or want to know more about? How can they help address it or raise awareness about it? So in this remote learning setup, I think it would be good if you can set up literacy service tracks so that later on you can compile all the proposals or the learning resources that your students submitted and create them in a website just like what UPLB say at did. And that's it. Maraming salamat po sa pakikinig. Sana ay marami po kayong natutunan mula sa mga naging karanasan namin sa pagtuturo ng NSTP. At sana po ay hindi kayo magsawang magturo ng NSTP. So para sa bayan, maraming salamat po. Thank you for your presentation, Professor Yambot. Uh, na we all have that. We all have that teacher na who inspires us, and then may mga classes tayo na akala natin um magiging boring or nakakatakot yung subject, pero turns out na masaya pala yung subject na yun. And then um you also mentioned na you all you always ask this to yourself na how can my learning be more relevant to my students and how it can be relatable. And I think uh, for all the um, teachers out there, I think pwede rin nila i-ask sa sarili nila para, para ma-engage palalo yung mga students nila. And we can also see in your facilitation tips na you engage discussions with your students and getting to know them kahit virtual. Thank you, um, Professor Yangbot. Uh, we would like to present you with a certificate of appreciation for your presentation. The National Service Training Program, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, University of the Philippines, Diliman, presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Assistant Professor John Lorenzo Yambot for their active participation as a resource person in the NSTP Online ROTC CWD 
CWTS and LTS in a remote learning setup. Given this 27th day of July 2021 via Zoom, signed by Dennis Kilala, the Director of NSTP UP Diliman, and Giovanni Francis A. Legaspi, the Deputy Director of NSRC UP Diliman. Thank you once again to Professor Enzo. Hey. Okay, once again, we will have a Q&A session with our speakers later in the program. So please send your send in your question for our speakers through the Q&A tab or the YouTube chat box. Okay, for our last speakers from UP Diliman, Assistant Professor Hazel Preclaro Ongtenko and Assistant Professor Narisa Zara will be sharing a collaborative presentation. Teacher Hazel Preclaro Ongtenko is an assistant, assistant professor from the Literacy Education Area of UP College of Education. For her bachelor's degree, she majored in special education at the same university and finished a master's of, master's of Arts degree by completing the Reading Specialist Program at Teachers College, Columbia University. She currently handles courses on early literacy and diagnostic teaching of literacy for beginning and struggling readers. Her research interests include the role of children's literature in developing literacy skills, literar literacy assessment and instruction, material development, and the creation of literacy programs for students with learning and or behavioral difficulties. Her extension work includes having supervised the delivery of reading remediation programs through the NSTP Literacy Training Service classes of UP College of Education at nearby public schools and community centers. Para sa kanya, isang karangalan ang pagiging eskola ng bayan. Kung kaya pinili niya maging isang guro ng bayan. Teacher Hazel's presentation will focus on sharing the literacy training service program as conceptualized by the Regale Cluster of UP College of Education or UPCED. She will also be sharing results of her, of her research on the influence of the UPCED LTS program on the literacy skills of second grade public school students. It will conclude with some tips regarding the conduct of literacy programs online. Karagpong naman ito ay presentation ng ating last speaker also from UP Diliman, si Narisa O. Zara or Teacher Risa ay guro sa kolehiyo ng edukasyon ng UP Diliman. Sa ilalim ng larangan ng edukasyon pang wika, nagtuturo siya ng NSTP LTS at naging tagapamagitan din para sa NSTP at sa kolehiyo. Ang kanyang presentasyon ay maikling bahagi ng pagbabalik tanaw sa mga naging gawain, proseso, karanasan at mahalagang natutunan sa dalawang semestre ng pagpapatupad ng programa ng NSTP sa kolehiyo at ng edukasyon. Sisimulan ni Professor Priclaro ang tempo ang kanilang presentasyon. Regina? Yes po. Ilang uh, minuto po ang meron ako? Um, 20 minutes pa. 15 to 20 minutes pa. Alright, maraming salamat. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. I usually start po my session with NSTP with asking all of the participants no, or the students, um, handa na ba kayong magsimula? Eh, may buong auditorium yan, di ba, na mag-a-attend ng mga students. Tapos, ang sagot dapat nila, in business, yes, ay bongga. So isipin niyo kung gaano kasaya no no pag sinabi kong handa na ba kayong lahat at handa na po silang lahat sa sabila bonga with jazz hands no Ngayon parang ano no uh, mahirap atang gawin 'yon ngayon pero subukan natin Reg okay lang ba na magbukas ka ng video mo ayan tignan natin na kung handa na si Reg Handa ka na ba Reg Bonga bonga <laughs> Oh with energy pa isa pa Handa ka na ba Reg Bongga! Bongga! O, di may energy na tayo. Ah, sige. Yes. <laughs> Ang ikikwento ko po ngayong hapon ay tungkol sa LTS program ng UP College of Education. Um, mula 2011, no? ang, ang kwento kong ito. At bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng ganitong endeavor or ganitong proyekto or ganitong programa? Because literacy is an agent of change. And buti na lang po, 
meron pong Republic Act that has given students the choice to join NSTP-LTS, CWATS, or ROTC in order to revisit what we call civic participation. So, it's important for us to realize that literacy can, through communicating, reading, numeracy, and critical thinking, be a means for social reform. Anong mahalaga dito? Bilang guru ng bayan, dapat naiintindihan natin na ang ating pagserbisyo ay para sa bayan. It is for social transformation. And that said, no, when we started teaching the Literacy Training Service Program at the UP College of Education, yung FLEMS na basihan pa namin noon ay 2008 pa. And can you imagine, there was an illiteracy rate of 13.6 at mas mataas pa yan ngayon. And then there were only 14 million Filipinos who remain in need of literacy instruction. Lang, 14 million ang dami kaya nun. Kaya minabuti namin na talagang gumawa ng programa that will enable college students, tertiary level students to believe that they too can be agents for social transformation through literacy teaching. Remember, literacy is a matter of social justice. Sana po, rather than equally providing all students with the same kind of education or the same mode or access, ang tinitingnan din natin po dito ay equity. Kung ano ang uri ng pagturo na kailangan mo, yun ang nabibigay sa iyo. Hindi lahat ng bata ay nakakapag-aral mag-isa. Hindi lahat ng bata ay natututo gamit ang isang module, learning module. Hindi ko po iwinawal ang bahala ang paggawa ng mga module ng ating DepEd no, teachers. On the contrary, they have really stood up, stepped up, and actually tried their very best to create materials that are so that are still unavailable no, or that are mostly unavailable um, to the everyday man um, for young children sana so that continues ang learning. Kaya lang, no, ang problema po natin ay hindi pa rin lahat nakaka-access dahil nga may limitations ang remote teaching and online learning. So can you imagine yung questions on equity of literacy instruction? Mas lalo na pong may difficulty with access. E teaching pa naman is a, or learning, no? learning in schools. Uh, bettering yourself through education is a fundamental human right. Lahat ba tayo ay may pagkakataon to take on that right? We would like, of course, all of the citizens no, in our country to develop no, and to grow. And so, we would like to um, focus our attention now to the kind of assistance that we can give learners so that they can participate in classrooms. Lahat ng subject, mapamape, mapa science, mapa matematika, or English, lahat po yan ay nagre-require ng reading and writing. And so important no, that we are able to provide, tingnan nyo to, light blue. Konting-konti lang yung nakalagay sa grid na access or uh, availability of remedial programs. But there are many kids and many no, uh, students out there, whether primary, intermediate, or secondary, na nangangailangan ng ganong instruction. So we had a research, and then we wanted to see how are the students' basic literacy needs being met? And how can we prepare no, teachers to address these needs? And we were very, very um, vigilant in trying to look for schools that would take our students in. So given RA 9163, nagkaroon ng NSTP program, Act of 2001, at nagkaroon kami ng programa na 
ibinuo ng aming Regale Cluster sa UP College of Education. Sila po ang aking mga ilan lamang sa aking mga kasamahan nung panahon na yon na ginawa namin ang programang LTS. Gumawa kami ng 16-week training program para maturuan namin, mabigyan namin ang kasanayan or skills ang college students para magturo sa mga bata sa second grade level. Okay? sa nearby public elementary school. So, syempre, may usapin tungkol sa state of literacy and the relevance of NSTP. Okay? Um, meron, of course, understanding the learners. Sino nga ba ang tuturuan ninyo? Paano ba mag-develop ang bata? And, of course, nandun din yung identifying needs. Kung nagde-develop man siya ng hindi um, regular no? or atypical ang development, then are we able to spot that? We taught our tertiary students to use assessment tools. Ano pa? Siyempre, pinag-usapan din namin ang numeracy. Kasi dati, um, actually hanggang ngayon naman, no, the law says, NSTP or Republic Act no, says that kailangan literacy and numeracy yung ituro. Kaya lang, ang kinaya lang po namin um, for the rest no, of the past few years is literacy. Pero we started also with trying to do literacy and numeracy. We talked about how people learn, how people learn language, literacy, and numeracy, assess learners' needs, uh, and we created, helped the students create and created alongside them an action plan for 10 lessons for each student. Okay? So, we wanted to see, of course, kung effective yung teaching. So, natuto ba ang grade 2 readers at risk? Hindi lang yon, may nagbago ba sa mga magulang and the assistance that they give their kids or may nagbago ba sa mga kakayanan o insights ng tertiary level students. Ano yung short answer dito? The short answer is no. Were they able to learn? What types of knowledge did the young kids learn? What types of knowledge did the college students gain? We held our project in and classes in a nearby school no, in Quezon City, malapit sa UP. And then we had 40 students in our NSTP class. And we had also 40, no, 57 students no, out of uh, the readers at risk that were referred to us. Unfortunately, two college students dropped out, so 38 na lang sila. Tapos 21 out of 57 yung nakakomplete ng pre-test at post-test. So as you can see, ang hirap ng attrition at ang hirap din ng consistency in attendance. But we tried to gather as much information as we could to look into the performance of children at the beginning and at the end. We wanted students to reflect on what they're experiencing. We wanted to also talk to them and have focus group discussions. And we also conducted teacher interviews. Okay. And what we realized was that no, meron namang available materials, pero kailangan talaga yan na ibahagi pa sa iba. Dr. Natividad Santos, Catch Them Early Handbook, was our main resource alongside Dr. Dina Ocampo's assessment tools para ma-measure ang literacy uh, performance ng bawat bata. What are the results of the program? The short of it is, no, may gains dun sa book orientation or familiarity with books, letter knowledge, reading of words, and reading a story. What did this show us? This showed us na yung traditional na pagtingin sa pagbasa na puro letters and words, yung mechanical aspect, yung napagtuunan din ng pansin ng aming mga estudyante. Hindi nila masyadong napagtuunan ng pansin ay yung oral language development na isa ring essential skill para matuto ka magbasa, di ba? Dapat alam mo yung wika. So we realized na dapat pala Pagtuunan din namin ang pansin, ang pagturo ng language at pagturo ng paghimay ng mga tunog sa isang silita. Yung syllables, uh, kunyari, baso, dalawang syllable yon. Pero pag sinabi mong phonological awareness, ilan yung tunog sa baso? B, A, S, O, apat yon. Alam nyo ba yon? O, oh, kailangan pala namin ituro pa yan sa college level students. Inasume namin na madali nilang maintindihan. At doon nga lumabas yung mga resulta. What is the short version of this? Ang result ay there were gains in any remedial program or remediation program. Ang masasabi natin ay magkakaroon at magkakaroon ng 
improvement. Okay? Kaya lang dapat nating intindihin ang kabuuan ng literacy. Now, aside from the kids learning, importante din na yung tertiary level students, bantayan din namin ang development, di ba? So, ano yung nakita namin? So, tingnan natin ha. First, yun sa mga bata. What kinds of knowledge no, did the students take away? The little kids, the grade 2 students, actually looked or had gains in meta-knowledge or the functions and purposes in, of reading and writing and the knowledge of text attributes. Yun nga, no? yung letter, sound correspondence. Okay? Anong na-realize ng mga batang tinuturuan na, grade, na second graders? Sabi nila that there is something good in learning. Na-realize nila that it was good for them to learn something that they thought was really, really difficult. They also... The college students also saw na aba gumagaling ang mastery of the students of their letter sound correspondence. So, nakapagbasa rin sila ng mas mabilis. O e, paano naman yung college students? Okay? Uh, ay hindi, ito pa pala yung sa, sa grade 2 students. Sa attitude naman, may change in attitude. They became happier, more participative, responsive, interested, and enthusiastic. Kaya talagang dapat manatili ang literacy training service program, di ba? Kasi napapabago or nakakaroon ng positive attitude ang bata towards reading and writing. They enjoy the session from being shy, naging mas bibo, from being passive, naging mas interested, and nagkaroon ng eagerness. Malayo pa lang yung tutor. Parang ate! Diba? May ganun. Again, wala pa to dun sa online setup. Um, naging mas attentive pa ang ibang bata. Mas nakinig sa teacher, mas alam na yung sagot sa teacher para sa tanong na ibinigay niya. At importante ito, ang mga bata ay nag-enjoy. They learn not only to read and write, but to have fun in the process. They were also more willing to try something new. Dati ayaw nila magsalita, biglang nagsasalita na sila. Dati ayaw nila magsumubok ba magbasa? bumasa na sila. Alright? Paano naman yung college? Paano sila nagbago? Aba, ito yung four areas. Content knowledge or yung kaalaman nila tungkol sa literacy instruction and literacy development. Next, knowledge of learners and their characteristics. Naging mas uh, bantay sa lakay sila sa mga chuti nila. Napapansin na nila yung growth, behaviors, and changes. Tapos yung educational context, mas nakita nila ano ba yung mga factors that are influencing literacy learning. And finally, ano ba dapat talaga ang educational ends in a program? Dapat may agreed purposes and values, di ba? Okay, so ano yung na-realize ng aming mga college level students that it is important to really know the state of literacy. It is important to understand teaching and learning. It is important to know how literacy develops, how to teach, and how to orchestrate homeschool collaboration. Ano pa sinabi nila? Dapat relevant. Kung anong ginagawa sa bahay, dapat konektado doon yung tinuturo natin. Kung hindi, walang saysay ang tinuturo sa kanila. Hindi nila magagamit o hindi nila makikita ang katuturan nito. Ano pa? Mahirap gumawa ng instructional material kung hindi mo naiintindihan kung ano ang assessment at anong kaibahan nun sa instruction. So, mahirap gumawa ng learning mat ng, ng literacy, no? materials for literacy, teaching, and learning. Dapat maunawaan muna natin ang liter literacy and learning. Okay, ano pa? So, Natuto sila maging creative, flexible, um, kailangan nilang mag-build ng rapport and sustain interest. And the tutors realize that there's more to literacy teaching. You need to have a connection with the kids. Tapos nakita nila na may potential pala ang mga batang ito. Ano yung mga issue? Poverty, family issues, community concerns, yung mga... Kakulangan siguro sa pagturo sa classroom, minsan yung disposition ng teacher, di ba? Parang wala na kumpiyansa sa mga bata. Yun yung mga factors that affect the kids themselves. And of course, their learning. And so, we shouldn't just focus on the development of the students or the development of our college students. Dapat the college students look at both. Their development as students of 
literacy teaching, but also the student, the learning of their duties. Pinaka-okay, syempre, they love being called teacher. Okay? Now, why is this important? Kasi isipin nyo, nag-grow yung NSTP-LTS program namin. Nagkaroon ng napakaraming faculty volunteers from our college. Hindi lang yon. Nagkaroon ng different areas and UPIS teachers joined us as well. Nagkaroon ng mas maraming community uh, centers and schools. Te student teachers provided the much-needed literacy instruction. They were able to learn, teach in a structured, systematic way. They were able to learn through games and teach through games. They did one-on-one -on -one teaching. They were able to provide focused intervention and they gave time for practice. Kahit na ganyan ang mga kondisyon, walang table, walang kwarto, at natuto silang maging kaibigan ng mga bata at maging gabay. Alright? So, ano yung kulang? Siyempre, access to books, access to experiences, and access to fun activities. And so, it's important to have books that go into kids' little hands. Yun pa rin po ang kulang, no? Kaya nagkaroon ng uh, proyekto na hindi pa natuloy, no? Pero meron kaming UP College of Education, Padyaklata, na na-conceive. And we hope that we can still create these libraries na babaybay, no? Sa mga barangay. So that, again, my colleagues at the UP, Diliman, uh, came up, no? With that particular um, prototype. Nagkaroon kami ng tie-up with the toy library. And of course, our visiting professors abroad no, who lent support. Okay, so what else? No? What we realized also is that we need to understand how to teach. So, ano yung mga uh, masasabi kong konting challenges ngayon pag online? Ang challenges na kinakaharap natin ay, of course, technological devices. Wala silang access. Wala silang phone, smartphone, walang pa iPad, tablet, walang laptop. Yun pa lang, mahirap na. Paano pa yung internet connectivity? So yung mga maliliit na bata na tuturuan natin, yan din yung kanilang uh, challenge. Wala tayong available materials para ibigay rin sa kanila para mapagpraktisa nila. Tapos, ready ba tayo as faculty volunteers and ready din ba ang mga studyante natin? Okay. So, ang ginagawa ko ay, as a literacy teacher, dinadaan ko yung mga students ko with a particular program kasi kailangan mo ng tatlong bagay. Dapat maramdaman ng mga bata ang presence mo. May tatlong uri ng presence. Meron tayong cognitive presence, ay social presence, yung feeling of connectedness with our students. Meron ding cognitive presence, yung pagtulong natin sa mga bata. Uh, to stimulate them through our activities and teaching presence. Can we pri provide feedback and support? So, kanyari, establishing social presence. Kung kaya natin itong gawin together, o oh, sige. Um, you can open your video. Regina, kanta tayo ha. Ready? Get set. Go! Ito yung kanta. Tan, 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 tan. May isa, may dalawa, may tatlong mga bata, may apat, may lima, may anim na mga bata, may pito, may walo, may siyam na mga bata, sampung mga bata, masaya. Pakisabi nga, ha, ha! <laughs> oh, kinilig ka naman dun sa haha, di ba? So, ayan yung social presence, di ba? Magkasama kayo, shared experience yan. Okay? Kung ikaw ay masaya, pumalakpak ka. O, di ba? Kung ikaw ay masaya, tumawa ka. Ha! Ha! O, ba? Kasali ka. Ano pa? Pag nagbato-bato pick ka, pwede rin ba maglaro online? Sabay tayo, teacher. Bato, bato, pick. Sige nga. O, oh, di ba? Panalo ka pa. We can teach online, di ba? And we can play. Meron ako dito. Pula. Dilaw. Ay, asul. Pinapahanap ko yung mga estudyante. Mga maliliit na bata na mga bagay-bagay. Para they can raise it. Kung kunyari, along bagay dito ang nagsisimula sa mm, mangkok. Anong bagay ang nagsisimula sa ah? Ay, ah! Ito pala. Ah, so, anong bagay ang nagsisimula sa 
sentron, di ba? Pwede naman maging interactive. Ano pang pwedeng gawin? Cognitive presence and teaching presence. Dapat meron tayong activities to have them see. Alin dito nagsisimula sa mm, mangga, mani, mamon, mami. Tapos bibigyan natin sila ng books to stimulate them. Mahilig ako sa mami, mahilig ako sa mangga, mahilig ako sa mani, and so on. Ano pang pwede natin gawin to sort these pictures? So, kasama ko yung tertiary level students ko na ginagawa namin to online. Not for NSTP, but for my literacy classes. And hopefully, maidagdag namin to sa NSTP. And then, mm, we practice the sounds. We practice how to pronounce the sounds. Mm, at tinudugtong namin siya, ma, 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 diba? At meron ng salita. Ano pang ginagawa namin? Nagtuturo kami ng mga salita. Saan ang bakuran? Anong dayami? Saan ang tubigan? Saan ang gilingan? And of course, after we teach them vocabulary, we have a story. Ito ay ang paglalakad ni Rosie. And after kami magturo no, ng isang storybook na ganito, paulit-ulit yung teksto para maibigan nila. At merong kakatuwang nangyayari. Toink! Yan. Sa bawat pangyayaring paghuli dun sa manok, kunyari, toink, hindi niya nagagawa at natutuwa ang mga bata sa ganitong mga libro at illustration. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is that there are many opportunities sana for us to be able to um, help students out there. Kaya lang, kailangan handa tayo na una-una makibagay. Pangalawa, unawain ang kanilang konteksto. Pangatlo, handa tayo magturo. Pangat apat, kailangan magbigay gabay at maglaan ng panahon. Hindi yan nangyayari agad-agad. And finally, encourage not just your presence as a teacher or faculty of tertiary level students or the presence of your tertiary level students but also the presence of your duties. And that said, no? anong sabi ng isang namin estudyante sa LTS? Before I had knowledge of it, but I thought it was just too dramatic. Anong pakialam ko dyan? But with first-hand experience, I realized there is something I can do to alleviate the problem. It was an epiphany for me. The fact that you are a newbie, you know many things, you will just have to find a way to share in developing the nation's youth. And with that, why not start with our neighbors? It's what we can do as a state university. Maraming salamat po! Maraming salamat po, Professor Pizarro. Ang thank you. Uh, next naman po, si Professor Pizarro po. Magandang araw sa lahat. No? Uh, I will be sharing this presentation on service learning with DPD and less teachers uh, and their learners. Uh, ako po si Professor Nisa Zara mula sa UP College of Education. Uh, ako po ay naging instructor ng NSTP at naging coordinator din, no, tagapamagitan, para sa kolehiyo mula academic year 2018 to 2020. So, uh, sa sharing na ito, sa maiksing sharing na ito, um, isi-share ko po sa inyo kung ano yung mga naging issues namin. No? So, uh, apat na puntos po. No? Una, uh, naging uh, mga issues namin nung nagkaroon ng pandemya kung paano ipagpapatuloy ang community engagement. No? Tapos ang naging response nga namin dito ang um, pag-ugnayan sa mga DEPED ALS teachers, yung mga issues namin na encounters pa implementation ng programa at ano yung mga insights namin at kung ano yung mga iba pang mga puntos na maaaring pag-isipan uh, tungkol dito. No? <clears throat> Katulad nga sinabi ko kanina nung nagkaroon ng pandemya, naging problema talaga kung paano magkakaroon ng community engagement given na hindi nga pwedeng pumunta sa mga komunidad. No? So ang programa ng College of Education ay talagang pagtuturo sa mga bata sa uh, public schools. So hindi namin iyon pwedeng gawin dahil meron ngang strict, uh, may quarantine at may strict na, na protocol na pinapatupad. At hindi rin talaga allowed ang mga UP students pumunta sa komunidad. <clears throat> ang iniisip namin, pwede ba itong gawing uh, online na lang? No? Pero hindi rin ito pwede dahil ang mga estudyante nga sa public school ay kulang sa mga resources para sa remote learning. Karamihan sa kanila, walang internet. no uh, Paano ito gagawin? At kung meron mang synchronous sessions ang mga public school teachers with their learners, ay napaka dalang nito. Alam nga namang agawan pa namin ang mga teachers nila na napaka konti nilang encounters with their students no? na kanilang asynchronous learning. So, uh, kinailangan talagang pag-isipan kung paano pa rin magkakaroon ng uh, LTS2 uh, uh, kahit na pandemya. 
pinag-isipan na namin na wag muna mag-offer ng LTS to at antayin na lang na medyo bumuti-buti ang 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 panahon baka sakaling after a semester ay babalik na sa ordinaryong setup no. Uh, pero hindi nga ito pwede dahil may mga graduating students kami no na kailangan talaga matapos ang kurso nito para hindi sila ma-delay ng graduation. So naisip namin na tipunin yung mga graduating students at i-delay na lang muna yung mga hindi pa naman graduating at gumawa ng programa na uh, makakapag ano pa din, no? uh, that will enable them to still do community engagement kahit sa ganitong setup. So sa pag-iisip na, uh, na yun, kailangan namin balikan no? yung uh, pinaka essence ng uh, NSTP bilang isang service learning Uh, activity. Inisip namin na kung ano ang mayroon ang gagawin, kailangan ito ay uh, isang bagay na uh, mag-require sa mga estudyante na magbigay ng serviso but at the same time, sa paggawa ng gawain na ito, no, pag-accomplish ng gawain na ito, sila rin ay matutupo. No? Kaya siya service learning. At uh, kung ano mang gawain ito, kailangan uh, na hindi kakalimutan na yung uh, agenda ng community at agenda ng estudyante ay parehas na ma-achieve. No? Hindi naman pwedeng yung mga estudyante lang natin ang, ang maging priority, makakuha sila ng grado at pagkatapos ay tapos na. So kailangan, kung ano man ito, kailangan beneficial sa mga estudyante at at the same time, beneficial din para sa community. So, um, naisip nga namin, dahil meron kami isang area sa kalahin na edukasyon ng non-formal education at yung aming um, teacher uh, sa non-formal education, si Dr. Mercedes Arasadon, no, meron siyang community ng mga ALS DepEd teachers, no. Ah, uh, ito hindi talaga organized community, actually FB community lang ito at ang mga teachers nito ay galing sa iba't ibang bahagi ng ng Pilipinas, no. So, ah, uh, bakit sila ay napili naming komunidad? Una, dahil syempre katulad ng maraming teachers, no, kailangan din nila ng kailangan nila ng tulong, no. At pangalawa, um Ang mga ALS teachers ay eksperto na sa alternative learning modalities bago pa man nagpandemya no nag remote learning ang lahat ginagawa na nila ito. So marami matututunan ang ating mga estudyante sa kanila. So yun, yun ang pinaka isa sa mga primary considerations. No? So ano yung mga naging roles ng mga students namin no? Naging learning facilitator sila but I have to admit na hindi lahat ng estudyante ay nagkaroon ng opportunity na magkaroon ng uh, synchronous sessions no with ALS learners no yung iba nakapag nakagawa nito may mga mentor teacher sila na pumayag na magkaroon sila ng uh, synchronous sessions with students no pero karamihan sa kanila ay nagprepare ng mga learning materials ano yung mga learning materials na kanilang ginawa so mga supplementary learning materials may kompleto naman na ang modules ng ALS ang kailangan nilang gawin ay ang mga um, pangtulong na materyales na makakapag-elaborate ng ilang topics no at anong mga materials ang pangtulong mga PowerPoint presentations katulad nito no uh, meron din yung mga uh, learning videos katulad nito yan Uh, yung iba naman ay pinagawa ng mga worksheets, yung iba pinagawa ng mga reviewers, at yung iba pinagawa ng mga modules. No? So ano ba yung proseso na in-implement namin sa loob ng dalawang implementation namin dito ay um, dalawang semesters pa lang, pangatlong semester pa lang ngayong uh, mid-year. No? Um, inumpisahan namin dito sa or yung introduction syempre ng literacy katulad naman ng normal na ginagawa sa literacy training service no tapos ay <clears throat> nagpapatuloy ito sa pamagitan ng introduction naman sa ALS no may mga videos may mga readings at may mga iniimbitahan kami ng mga uh, teachers mula sa uh, ALS no na magpapakilala kung ano ang ALS no at ang mission ng ALS at pinakamahalagang dapat ma-accomplish dito ay uh, mapukaw yung damdamin ng mga NSTP students no sa <laughs> mission ng ALS at kung anong kagandahan na idudulot nito no sa sa society no dahil ang ALS ay parang huling pagkakataon ng mga ng mga learners no na na disadvantage ng sistema para makapag-aral pa rin ito yung mga adult learners ito yung mga out of school youth ito yung mga people in conflict with the law no so pero nakakapag-aral pa rin sila sa pamamagitan ng ALS yun yung yun yung damda yun ang puso ng ALS na dapat ay uh, ma intindihan no ng mga ng mga mag-aaral ng NSTP. 
At siyempre magkakaroon ng capacity building ulit. Uh, Mingi pa rin kami ng tulong mula sa mga ALS teachers dito dahil may kakaibang pangailangan sa pagtuturo no, ng ALS. Uh, kaya siya oh, yellow kasi hindi naman ito palagi natatapos sa LTS-1. Karaniwan ay nagpapatuloy ito sa LTS-2 pa. No, sa LTS-2, no, maghahanap kami ng uh, mga partner teachers. Ang ginagawa ko dito ay nagpo-post ako sa community ng sign-up sheet kung sino yung mga teachers na gusto maging partner teachers ng mga estudyante natin, maging mentors ng mga students natin. And then, uh, mag assign na yung mga estudyante sa mga uh, LTS students, uh, sa mga ALS mentors. And then, um, binibigyan na sila ng pagkakataon na makausap ang mga uh, AL, uh, mga ALS teachers na ito. No? Pag-uusapan nila kung uh, ano yung uh, ipapagawa sa mga estudyante namin uh, na NSTP, no? uh, kung ano ang mga traba- tasks na ito. No? Um, at ang mga estudyante ay papagawin na isang uh, dokumento na no? naka-articulate dito kung ilan yung mga activities na kanilang gagawin no at kung ano-ano ang mga ito description ng mga ito tapos kung anong deadline no so ito ay agreement ng mga bata sa kanilang guro at uh tinitingnan chine-check ko din ito bilang kanilang teacher no um tinitingnan ko kung mahirap ba ito kaya ba itong gawin ng mga estudyante at inaaprubahan so pag naaprubahan na ito paari na silang magsimulang magtrabaho so magkakaroon na ng working period so working period na ito um, kailangan na mag-submit ng weekly progress report at reflection at ang instruction sa mga bata ay kailangan ay bigyan ako ng kopya lahat ng komunikasyon no uh, kung pwede nila akong isisi sa lahat ng komunikasyon ito ay mabuti at tipunin nito dahil gagawin itong documentation na isasubmit sa dulo ng kurso pagkatapos ay isasubmit na nila yung kanilang trabaho pagtapos na ito no meron isang Google Drive folder kung saan ito ila- lahat isasubmit sasubmit sa kanilang partner teacher at isasubmit din um, sa kanilang NSTP teacher. Tapos, uh, magkakaroon ng peer assessment at mentor assessment. No? Uh, i-assess sila ng kanilang mga katrabaho sa mag-aral at pati ng kanilang naging mentor. Tapos, magkakaroon ng awarding ng certificate no, sa kanilang mentor teachers din. Uh, ano yung mga issues na na-experience namin? Yung connectivity issue talaga na nakaka-apekto uh, sa komunikasyon between the mentors and our students. Um, Kasi yung mga, yung mga mentors, they live in different areas of the Philippines. No? And in some areas, no, um, connectivity is difficult. No? It's an issue, it's a challenge. No? Internet is a challenge. So, uh, kaya yung uh, communication becomes difficult for these teachers too. Tapos, um, if you remember, during the first semester, merong nagkaroon ng bagyo, tapos may mga areas na nabaha sa Pilipinas at may mga mentors na naapektuhan talaga dito. So, nagkaroon ng problema sa communication with their students at ang patuloy ng trabaho. Ganun din yung mga teachers na naapektuhan din ng pandemya, yung nagkasakit talaga o di kaya yung pamilya nila nagkasakit, no? Nagkaroon din ng medyo pagbagal sa pag-accomplish, pagtapos ng mga trabaho. Tapos, um, uh, ang isa pa naging issue dahil sa diversity ng mga tasks, di ba? Worksheets, modules, uh, supplementary materials, etc. It was difficult to capacitate students kasi napaka iba't iba yung requirements ng mga materials na ito, no? tapos may mga mentors din na iba't iba yung levels of expectations no tapos uh, yung mga estudyante na nagpunta sa College of Education who uh, took LTS in the college expecting that they will be teaching students they become disappointed they get disappointed kasi nga they don't end up they did not end up teaching students no um uh, gumawa lang sila ng mga materials konti lang sa kanilang nakapagturo so yung iba na disappointed talaga sila So, um, hindi perfecto yung naging problem, problema kasi emergency response lang naman din talaga siya. No? Pero mara- at marami siyang dapat i-improve. No? Unang-una na dito, kailangan siguro magkaroon ng orientation ng mentors. No? Tapos kailangan ng mas systematic na capacity building for students. Um, sa panghuli, um, sa palagi ko ay kailangan natin ipaalala sa ating mga sarili that these are not ordinary times. We're not educating in ordinary times. No? We're educating in an emergency uh, and because we're educating an emergency, um, it should have impact in our expectations. No? And I think that we should be more realistic when it comes to our expectations. And because of that, uh, I think we have to think about the following. You know, number one, you know, NSTP requirements regarding community engagement. I know that, there, that the law requires uh, certain 
expect the law has certain expectations regarding community engagement, no. But then, like what I said, we're educating in the context of an emergency, and there are certain things that we cannot do given our situation. So I think there's room to think to rethink, no, about our requirements. No, what matters is we continue to educate our students, no. And then what really qualifies as a community? Um, yung community ba that we need to engage with? Do they have to be organized community? So I think we have to think about that. No? Um, kailangan ba may umuwa para makapag-engage with a uh, community? Because if we continue to ask for MOA so that we can engage in a community, baka hindi matapos yung mga NSDP given, for instance, in UP na ang daming pagdadaanan no, ng, ng MOA. And then what qualifies as community engagement for literacy training so this? No? Ano yung mga activities na pwede mag-qualify as literacy na? No? Uh, which is related to number four also, no? yung expanding idea of teaching. No? Um, ang expectations ba natin ng teaching kailangan ay meron um, direct encounter with the students, online man or in person, yun lang ba ang teaching? Or in the context of uh, an emergency you know, where everything is remote, no and the resources that we have do not really allow for more frequent synchronous engagements no um yung resource based um teaching ba doesn't count so um i think that there's there's room to think about these things no? because these are not ordinary times and our capacities are limited but so we have to be realistic what matters is uh we continue no uh, educating our students so um yun lang po at uh, maraming salamat thank you, thank you po kay um, professor from uh, Navisan Lara po excuse me Thank you very much sa inyong ibinahagi, Teacher Lisa and Teacher Lisa. With that, we would like to present our speakers with the Certificate of Appreciation. So, national, the National Service Training Program, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, University of the Philippines, Diliman, presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Assistant Professor Hazel Priclaro Ong Tenko for their active participation as a resource person in the NSTP online ROTC, CWTS, and LTS in a remote learning setup. Given this 27th day of July 2021 via Zoom, signed by Dennis Kilala, the Director of NSTP UP Diliman, and Giovanni Francis A. Legaski, the Deputy Director of NSRC UP Diliman. Thank you very much, Professor Hazel. Maraming salamat. Okay. Um, para naman po kay Professor Zara, the National Service Training Program, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, University of the Philippines, Diliman, presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Assistant Professor Narisa Zara for your active participation as a resource person in the NSTP online ROTC, CWTS, and LTS in a remote learning setup. Given this 27th day of July 2021, via Zoom, signed by Dennis Kilala, the Director of NSTP UP Diliman, and Giovanni Francis A. Ligaski, the Deputy Director of NSRC UP Diliman. Thank you very much, Teacher Lisa. Maraming salamat, Dean. Okay. Um, once again, thank you very much to our speakers, Assistant Professor Doris Wilson from UP Baguio, Ms. Charis Bautista from UP Visayas, Assistant Professor John Lorenzo Yambot from UP Los Banos, and of course, Assistant Professor Hazel Piclaro Ongtenko and Assistant Professor Nerisa Zara from UP Diliman. And let us now invite our speakers back for the Q&A session. We will be reading the questions sent by our participants through the Zoom registration in, in the Q&A tab and from the YouTube chat box. Okay, let's begin. Um, this question po is for our speakers. Um, the question is, how can NSTP activities help promote mental health among its teachers, students, and beneficiaries or partners? Um, let's start po with Professor Doris Hall. Uh, uh, related to mental health, yung pangalawang video na na-share ko sa inyo, uh, actually, ang focus nun ay sa mental health. So, um, although hindi...
nag-raid yung target na ano. Pero may may group na talagang yun ang gusto nilang gawin. So, uh, sige, inano na namin. Uh, uh, ini, itinuloy na namin. Kung sa teachers, mas sa, uh, hindi pa sa NSTP, mas pa sa pahinungod yung may ganong programa kung sa UP Baguio na nakapagsagawa kami dun sa mga partner school webinars pero hindi pa We'll get back to you, Professor Doris Paul. Well, medyo lagi po yung internet niyo po on your end. Um, let's um, move to um, Ms. Cherry's Bautista, yung question po. Uh. Yeah, so um, I was thinking about, siguro more on emphasizing na when you volunteer, it's actually good for your, for, for the student's mental health. Kasi di ba, when, when you um, help others learn, or help others, di ba, sa, um, sa, C sa CWTS man yan, parang you, you take um, a, a look outside of yourself and you're able to extend yourself to others. And in that way, nakakatulong talaga siya with uh, mental health um, uh, issues. So, so yun. Uh, siguro one more thing that um, I'd like to take on, siguro in, in my future LTS subjects, is syempre, yung, yung literacy, yung framework ng World Economic Forum, meron kasi siyang mga uh, competencies and character traits that we would like also our students to have. So, um, siguro one of the, the projects that the students can um, actually do is to look into these uh, competencies and character traits that and um, formulate a project na that can help um, learners around them be more uh, literate in those um, competencies and character traits and of course we I can't expect my students to to teach what they don't have so parang I hope that um, at, at uh, that point uh, parang matulungan din sila uh, whatever uh, mental health struggles that they may have of course with the support of the university as well so, Thank you so much, Ms. Charges. Uh, how about you, Professor, um, um, Professor Enzo Papa? Uh, siguro pa, uh, bukod sa yung usual na topics na kinover sa common module, pwede siguro tayo magdagdag ng another topic on mental health. Kasi halimbawa sa UPLD, dinagdag na lang din namin yung topics nung face-to-face -face pa. May topic kami on campus safety and security, tapos doon sa national security concerns, nagdagdag din kami ng topic on cyber security. So pwede siguro para sa mga estudyante, magdagdag tayo ng topic tungkol sa mental health. Tapos siguro para din dagdag na rin sa mga estudyante at para na rin sa mga faculty, base sa karanasan ko nung mga nakaraan, mga synchronous sessions natin na maging kumustahan. Okay, kesa yung synchronous session na parang lagi lang tayo nagdi-discuss. Kasi ang mindset ko noon ay kung magdi-discuss lang ako sa synchronous session, baka mas maganda na gawin na lang siyang asynchronous. Kasi baka mas ma-appreciate nung mga bata kung yung synchronous session ay kumustahan, kwentuhan, kung kumusta sila, ano yung mga nagawa na nila sa mga uh, pinapagawa natin sa mga common modules or sa component phase. Yeah. Thank, thank you po, Professor Andrew. Um, how about po kay Teacher Hazel po? Oh, nakamute po kayo. Ay. Um, so far, ang nasa isip ko ay, I like what I heard kanina that some of the activities were done as a group. And sometimes when you conduct that as a group, hindi nakaka-nervyos. It's also good if magkasama kayo. For example, when I would mentor my students and they would teach young kids, hindi ko sila iiwan. Talaga magkakasama kaming together. And I think pag magkaagapay kayo, saluhan yan eh. And they will learn to trust the process. Um, and if you make it fun, then they will want to engage in it. So I think kailangan talaga kasali. No? Kasali sila. Feeling nila kasali sila. Feeling nila na may ginagawa silang positibo. And when they feel that they're successful, then it will give them positive vibes, di ba? And ganun din sa mga bata. Kailangan meron tayong uh, praise system na hindi authentic dapat, di ba? 
dapat nakikita nila na talagang napapangiti nila yung mga bata, tulungan natin sila to do that. Kung LTS to young kids ang gagawin. Pero again, it's mentorship. It's being there. It's magkaagapay tayo. Hindi kailangan eto assignment niyo, bahala na kayo. Yeah? Sometimes maganda rin yung magkakasama. Kung kaya ng oras. <laughs> Yes, that's true po. Uh, next po kay Teacher Risa po. But, Teacher Risa. Uh, ganun din. Marami na rin namang nasabi kanina. No? Agree din ako kay uh, Professor Yambot. No? Ganun din naman ang ginagawa namin sa aming mga estudyante. Bago talaga mag-umpisa ng, ng klase, ay mag-umpisa talaga ito sa kumustahan, kung kumusta sila. At kasama din sa reflection nila, naka-embed doon na uh, pati yung where they are coming from every time they work, should be a part of uh, their reflection. So talagang naka-embed naman din talaga siya. At palagi ko, yung buong programa naman natin ng NSTP ay malakas din naman ang kanyang uh, pagtuon sa mental health kasi nga ang ating unang-unang uh, module ay understanding self. di ba? So palagi yes. ko, uh, malakas yung ating tuon dito. No? Uh, yun namang mga uh, estudyante naman na kanilang hinahawakan sa ALS Ganun din kasi ang ALS din, um, dahil nga ang mga estudyante nila ay galing sa iba't ibang uh, aspeto ng buhay. May mga adults, may mga marami silang pinanggagalingan. No? Talagang um, ano na to, kasama ito sa kultura ng ALS, yung pagkumusta sa isa't isa, kung ano yung kanilang pinagdadaanan, yung ganun. Kasi ina-acknowledge at in-embrace talaga siya ng uh, alternative learning system. So kasi kabahagi din ito sa naging training ng mga estudyante. Thank you po. Um, let's go back po to Professor Doris. Oh, medyo choppy po kayo kanina. Yes, yeah, sorry. So, uh, dagdaga ko lang siguro yung mga na banggit ko kanina, no? Uh, kung pwede i-close ko siguro yung video para mas ma, ano, hindi siya mag-choppy. Sandali. So, yung nabanggit ko kanina, um, kung doon sa proyekto na ginawa na may kaugnayan sa mental health, so merong uh, isang grupo na yun yung talagang gusto nilang gawin na focus sa mental health. So, yun yung pangalawang example na na-share ko kanina na video na uh, related siya sa uh, um, depression at uh, pangbata na ano, na kwento tungkol doon sa sa ganong sitwasyon um siguro yung yung sususugan ko rin yung nabanggit kanina na kung sa mismo mga estudyante yung kanilang weekly reflection malaking tulong din yon doon sa para mailabas nila yung mga sa loobin nila yung mga uh, yung iba kasi na, na mga nabasa ko ng mga reflection talagang uh, pag pagbuboses nung ano nararamdaman nila during that time na confused sila na parang pagod na pagod na sila sa mga nararanasan nila at yung mga uh, yung yung challenges na hinaharap nila isang malaking tulong siguro dun sa mismong pagpapatakbo ng proyekto bahagi nung yung sa project proposal pa lang nila ay yung SWOT so meron silang pagtingin dun sa sarili nila ano yung mga nila ano yung mga weaknesses nila at yung environment na ginagalawan nila at binalikan din nila ito dun sa nung nagawa na nila yung proyekto at tiningnan nila ano uli yung SWOT na na uh, kinalabasan no so may nakita rin nila yung yung mga challenges before and after nilang gawin yung proyekto yun po <laughs> yan thank you po professor Doris po uh, next question po is for professor Doris po uh, how did your students utilize the internet in teaching to the partner school what if their students did not have access to the internet to watch the videos? Did the students also need to create physical learning activity sheets for their students? Uh, ayun po. So yung dun sa, sa delivery na with the partner schools, kung dun sa reading, uh, hindi kasi siya... Uh, Naka-modular kasi yung mga students doon sa ano. So ang, ang way namin is Facebook. So yung Facebook group yun yung uh, para mas madali nilang i-access yung video pero yung kopya mismo binigyan din namin yung yung naunang part kasi ito ay partnership with Pahinungod um, yung mga output ng NSTP ngayon uh, hindi pa namin siya naipapasa pero meron na kaming nauna na ipasa through Pahinungod na, na sa mga teachers para pwede nilang gamitin later on pero sa mga uh, estudyante mas sa Facebook yung ano namin yung paraan namin para ma-reach out so siguro uh, hindi ko na ipakita dun sa last part ng video so yung yung format ng video na ginagawa um, na naka-align dun sa reading 
dun sa last part niya, merong portion dun na may mga target words para dun sa mga uh, sa stories. Tapos yung paano siya uh, baybayan at bigkasin. Tapos yun na yung anti-COVID na ano, na mga reminders. So, ganun yun yung mga naging format, lalo dun sa uh, COVID-related na mga stories. Thank you po, uh, Professor Doris. Uh, next question po. Um, this is for all our guest speakers. Knowing that we teachers still also need to learn how to adapt in this in this setup, how did you successfully teach your students to be teachers in this online setup as well? Um, let's start po with Teacher Lisa po. Uh, um, hindi ko alam kung successful nga ba o <laughs> hindi ko masasabi. <laughs> Mahirap sabihin na naging successful talaga. No? Kasi nga, sa tingin ko... Um, parang minimum learning requirements lang talaga ang uh, kayang uh, gawin uh, sa panahon ngayon ano um, <clears throat> pero um, maano naman ang aming feedback sa mga bata kumbaga kung ano yung mga kaya nilang gawin at hindi nila kayang gawin ay sasabihin nila ano kaya uh, mahalaga yung ganung klase ng openness no para uh, mabigyan sila ng sapat na tulong so hindi ko talaga masasabi na <laughs> successful na with 100% na certainty na uh, mm-hmm. to, to be honest. <laughs> Yan po. Next po, kay teacher Hazel po. Same question po. Kasi iba rin talaga yung expectations eh. A lot of the students, nga like what teacher Risa said, had different expectations. They had a different vision of what LTS should be, you know, or how they wanted the program to run. And because nga of our constraints now, um, kailangan i-recalibrate talaga expectations and they, some of them will be disappointed. So if they're disappointed, it's hard to say if it's successful, di ba? Yes. Pero I think all of us naman do realize that All of us are bearing the same challenges and we really just have to make the most of what we have. Um, kaya suportahan na lang. What's nice is when a student thanks you for the experience, um, lalo na pag, ano, pag okay yung teacher-student ratio, hindi masyado madami yung sudyante. Pag okay yun, then nakaka-connect ka with a student and they say thank you, they're appreciative, they share their reflections. Makikita mo naman doon sa reflections. Ang natutuwa ko is that the reflections have been very honest. Um, and that's valuable. Um, so, sana, yun lang, um, continue lang with the openness, like what teacher Lisa said. Kasi doon lang naman tayo magkakaalaman, di ba? Kung anong nararamdaman ng isa't isa. Yeah. It is not just been challenging for students, but also for faculty. And I'm just very grateful that students have also been understanding on their end. Yes, thank you, teacher Lisa. Um, how about you, po, sir, um, Professor Yambot po? Tama, mahirap sabihin ko naging successful. Pero katulad ng mga pinesent ko kanina, malaking bagay din siguro na yung mga pinapagawa natin sa mga sudyante natin ay hindi masyadong abstract. Himbawa, kasi kung sasabihin natin na gawin nyo itong assessment activity na to para sa module na to, pero paano kung yung assessment activity na yun ay nag-work sa isang face-to-face setup? Diba? So hindi nila ma-appreciate yun kasi nasa ibang learning modality po tayo. So sa tingin ko, mahalaga na dapat nakikita ng mga estudyante kung uh, paano gagawin yung activity na to given yung mga resources na meron sila ngayon. Kasi hindi pa natin alam kung hanggang kailan matatapos itong pandemic na to. So, pag sila, nag-decide sila maging literacy worker, alam nila kung anong gagawin. Kung nasa parehong sitwasyon pa rin po tayo. Yan po. Okay. Yeah. Thank you po, Professor Yambot. Uh, how about you po, Ms. Therese? So, yung... I, I think meron kasi talagang innate uh, gap between how I teach my... my LDS students versus how they teach theirs. Kasi syempre, uh, I, I teach them asynchronously. So, uh, they download um, the course guides and all. So, uh, and then, um, sila naman, halos face-to-face. Face-to-face talaga ang most na nangyayari. Kasi nga, yung mga natuturuan nila is their, their younger siblings, yung mga uh, pabangkin, makapitbahay, et cetera, ganun. So, pero um, I, I make sure that I am always available for Uh, consultation and uh, when they do write their reflections and um, 
uh, nakikita ko, ko din naman kung saan nag, nagsastruggle yung, yung bata in terms of um, teaching uh, the, the learner that they selected. So, so yun, I, I just make sure to um, uh, open a line of uh, communication sa kanila that they can message me any time of the day. Minsan kasi pag... Uh, pag Y- yung mga internet connections nila pag umaga, hindi ganun kalakas. So, minsan may dumarating na message sa akin ng alauna ng madaling araw. So, so I just try to to open communications uh, as much as possible considering na, na syempre, um, if we um, who have the means already struggle with the current setup, uh, mas lalo na yung mga wala talaga means pa na both LTS students and those learners that um, our LTS students serve. So, yan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you pa, Mr. Reese. Uh, next pa, um, Professor Doris pa. Ayan. Kung dun sa uh, class na mismo hinandal ko, ang ginawa kasi nila mas dun sa storytelling. So, yung, yung kumbaga yung success, ano nun, ay na, nagawa nung bawat groups yung two videos na requirement nila. So, yun yung parang naitawid, kumbaga, no? yun, yun yun na yung uh, minimum requirement na naiset namin na nagkaisa nung sa simula ng uh, NSTP program. Ang siguro pinaka naapektuhan ay yung groups no na nasa ibang facilitators na merong part na tutorial kasi malaking naging epekto nung changes sa DepEd schedule kasi nung nakipag uh, coordinate kami sa sa mga partner schools ang ibinigay nila sa amin na na program ay yung sa last part yung na siya rin yung nung una na, na schedule ay tamang-tama do sa schedule din natin sa UP pero nung nagkaroon ng changes talagang na move sila apektado na siya nung finals na ng mga estudyante, mag end na yung classes, ganyan. So, doon, uh, nagkaroon kami ng adjustment kasi nung una na tinarget, tatlong videos ang gagawin nila for tutorials. At yung mga estudyante kasi namin ay nasa language and literature, yung mga kumuha ng um, tutorial. So, ang naibigay sa kanilang topic ay literature. So, ano naman siya? Uh, nasa within yung scope ng kanilang uh, kaalaman yung nabigay sa kanila. Pero, uh, hindi updated kumbaga yung modules na available do sa partner schools at matagal yung panahon para kami makakuha ng ng magiging guide kasi ang gagawin nila ay supplementary material na uh, video para doon sa uh, topic ng literature so siguro yung sa part na yon doon talaga nahirapan yung mga estudyante na tutorials yung naging uh, proyekto nila pero naitawid din dahil nag uh, yung specific topics na lang na nakikita nila na pwedeng magamit. So, very specific topic yung um, ginawa nila. At walang face-to-face. Paggawa pa rin ng video yung naging proyekto nila. Okay. Uh, thank you po, Professor Doris. Uh, ito na po um, para sa speak to our guest speakers. Please share on your strategies at, at addressing limitations on connectivity. Uh, napansin ko po in, sa mga presentations yung po na ang common denominator niya po is limitations po ng connectivity. So, uh, can you please share with us yung strategies niya po? Uh, how do you, um, um, paano yung ginagawa yung class with limitation ng, limitations ng connectivity? So, um, who would like who would like po to start? Tawag na lang po. Ay, ayan po, si Professor Doris po. Siguro, um, compared dun sa first na, uh, first part no yung yung first semester na common modules at saka yung yung ibang bahagi ng uh, ng uh, specific modules mas asynchronous kasi yung naging paraan namin so yung mga videos at yung mga powerpoint presentations lahat nakalagay dun sa VLE at hindi namin chine-check yung attendance nila kundi nasa time nila na ma-access yon Nung second semester, medyo mas marami kaming synchronous session kasi yung trainings nila at yung consultations. Pero ginawa namin available yung video nung consultations at nung mga ano, nung mga uh, trainings para maka ano sila, makahabol sila lalo na yung mga mahirap ang um, internet connection nila. Yes po. Uh, next po, Miss Jadisa. Uh, yeah, same same answer. <laughs> Kay you um uh, Professor Wilson. Pero yung yung I think the most important uh um uh, strategy for me was to just really make myself available kung may tanong sila. So so um um 
mostly kasi uh, meron talagang setup sa or, or may, there are really students sa sa UP Visayas na hindi talaga sila makapag um, attend ng synchronous session. So uh, instead of um, them spending lots for their load kasi magda-download pa ng video and all. So talagang I, I really made sure that my um, study guides were as if Uh, parang sinabihan ko na sila na oh, imagine niyo na ako na yung nagdi-discuss uh, bosses ko yung naririnig niyo while you read the the study guide I made so so ayun nilagyan ko ng memes para para hindi pa bigat yung yung subject matter so so um so yeah I think that uh, once they they get a hold of um the the PDF na ano parang an- andun na lahat and then uh, I also made the uh, videos um uh supplementary lang. So so if uh, if kunyari may student na talagang hindi hindi ka talaga kaya mag mag uh, play on YouTube ay ay um buti na lang actually wala. Walang <laughs> nagsabi na nahirapan sila sa YouTube kasi if ever I would I would um, try to really transcribe the, the whole video para lang para lang hindi sila maka miss out. So so yon um it, it's challenging but at the same time um um You know the, the key to really um, overcoming internet connectivity is, is to really have compassion and um uh, and um, empathy sa mga nawawala ng, ng ng internet and uh, yeah uh, in order to facilitate yung open communication binigay ko na lahat ng klasing um, communication lines so pati landline cha cellphone kung kailangan talaga na hindi hindi they can't reach me through through email man or facebook messenger they can they can call they can text so so yon um buti naman wala namang tumatawag na nauna <laughs> ng madaling araw <laughs> nagme-message lang sa FB Messenger so so yon um that that's how uh, we were able to um ultimately overcome a bit of of um the internet connectivity uh um, challenge thank yeah. you so thank you so much Ms. Charles um next call Professor Yambot team question pa Yan. Uh, sa parte nung pag-address ng limitations sa internet connection ng mga students, sa UPLB malaki yung naging uh, parte ng UPLB NSTP office, ng OVCAA at ng mga kolehiyo doon sa pag-address ng mga uh, learning resources na kulang or limitado sa mga students. Tapos pangalawa, yung instant messaging naging effective siya sa akin kasi kahit yung messenger, di ba, kahit wala ka namang internet, makakapag makagamit ka pa rin ng messenger application. Okay? Tapos pangatlo, doon sa mga group activities, katulad nung sinabi ko kanina, ang naging strategy namin, yung composition ng group, dapat meron doon yung reliable yung internet connection nila, tapos meron doon yung hindi masyadong reliable. Para naman yung composition, I mean, walang grupo na parang lahat sila ay limited yung access sa internet or sa mga gadgets. Tapos pang... Uh, panghuli, syempre constant checking. Katulad ng sabi ko kanina, at the middle of the semester, check mo ulit sila. Lalo na sa sitwasyon natin sa Pilipinas or halimbawa sa Luzon, di ba? may mga bagyo lagi. Kaya hindi mo alam kung yung sinabi nilang may internet sila sa kalagitnaan ng semester, may internet pa din sila. So mahalaga na dapat constant yung checking natin sa mga estudyante natin. Right. Thank you po, Professor Yambot. Next po, uh, Teacher Hazen. Uh, yung limitation sa connectivity talaga, hindi natin makokontrol. So, yung unang-una talaga is letting go. <laughs> Parang, you really just have to adjust and be flexible. Kasi, pag may iba na kaya nila to be online and then the rest can't, di ba? Kailangan marunong ka magtansya or mag-recalibrate uh, what's fair and ano yung bare minimum na kailangan man lang nilang ma- ma-accomplish. Kasi, yung competency naman yung habol mo Um, and just just siguro in my own head no kailangan maging flexible ako kasi yun nga pag ako mismo I'll stress out kasi this is the way I originally planned this learning activity para hindi talaga eh meron akong estudyante na talagang ano lang wala siyang synchronous session so you have to respect that so I think it's just acknowledging the real uh, situation and then recalibrating always adjust when you can yeah. okay thank you for teacher and uh, next next for teacher Lisa in question uh ganun din actually all of the above um 
uh, ang idadagdag ko lang ay ako pinipili ko yung mga uh, competencies na kailang ituro ng synchronous session. Yung iba ay ginagawa na lang siyang asynchronous kung hindi naman talaga kailangan. Yung mga capacity building sessions, no, yung mga workshops, ganyan, yun lang yung ginagawang synchronous. At um, hindi rin nire-require, katulad ng mandate ng university, na no, huwag i-require ang lahat ng estudyante na umaten ng mga synchronous sessions. Ganun din naman, hindi nagbibigay ng mga requirements na i-grade during synchronous sessions. At kung hanggat kaya, ay gagawing available yung video ng sessions para sa mga taong hindi makaka-attend. So, Ganun din naman. Yeah. Thank you po, Teacher Risa. Uh, I'm sure that our participants have more questions. But unfortunately, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. To close today's webinar and the NSTP online webinar series, let us call on Assistant Professor Shakina dorel Kievi, the Head of the Alumni Relations Desk and also the Coordinator of the NSTP UP Baguio. Hey, um, maraming salamat po sa lahat sa inyong pagdalo and for staying with us even until the end of this four day, ano, sorry, four series webinar uh, series that we have. No? Um, if there's one thing that I think everyone got from this uh, webinar is that we really have a lot of, no matter how much you prepare, there will always be a lot of different things that is out of our control. So all that you can do is, you just have to let go. And more importantly, we have to keep in mind that, you know, we all have different contexts. Our students have different contexts. We they have different um, demographies. We are we are in different locations. So helpful as the different um, talks have been. Uh, madami tayong napulot na mga mga tips, mga different activities that you could probably utilize in your own um, uh, NSTP projects. We have to keep in mind, pa rin, that it's not a one size fits all thing. No, we really have to be able to tailor fit, tailor fit it to the very specific needs of our students. Siguro one guiding principle that you could keep in mind is, you know, we really have to be able to show compassion because at the end of the day, we hope that the students really get something more worthwhile rather than just be able, being able to produce a requirement that is needed for NSTP. So with that, um, yeah, so we have several people to thank in order for us to make sure na talagang, yeah, mapasalamatan natin ang mga lahat ng tao na who made this event possible. So we have the Diliman Interactive Learning Center for their technical assistance. Uh, they were able to host all of the webinars through their Zoom account. All our research speakers, starting from day one up to now, no, marami po salamat, are from ROTC, CWTS, and LTS. This is the support staff especially. no. Um, the webinar hosts, the designers of the different publication materials that we were given, the technical operators of Zoom and YouTube live stream, and even for the logistics of this event. Special mention, uh, hindi po magiging posible ang, ang series ng webinars ito kung hindi po sa pagtutulungan ng iba't iba mga CUs po natin. We would like to thank Assistant Professor Cleto Naniola Jr. PhD, the Director um, of the Office of Extension and Community Service, Coordinator of NSTP UP Mindanao, Assistant Professor Rosel Collado, Assistant Vice Chancellor of the OBCAA of UP Los Baños, and the Director of NSTP UP Los Baños, Mr. Nino Ibanez, Coordinator of NSTP UP Cebu, Assistant Professor Astrid Diana, the Director of NSTP UP Manila, Ms. Luan Kalipayan, the Coordinator for UPOU, Ms. Rona Verenia, the Director for the Ugnayan ng Pahinugon UPOU, Assistant Professor Darius Salaum, Director NSTP, NSTP UP Visayas, and of course, Assistant Professor Dennis Kilala, the Director of NSTP UP Diliman, and Assistant Professor Giovanni Legaspi, Deputy Director NSRC UP Diliman, and yours truly, Shine Kerry of UP Baguio. So, marami marami po salamat. No? Um, siguro if there's one thing that came out out of all of the meetings that we've been having with the different directors and coordinators of NSTP, uh, Ang na-ingrain po sa amin talaga is the challenge of how to make sure that NSTP does not end up simply as a requirement for our students, but instead that we are able to really uh, inculcate and even make our students enjoy the spirit of service. So with that in mind, siguro one thing that we have to keep in mind though, with all of the things that we've learned, how do we how do we try to, to combine all of these things and at the same time make sure that we are able to respond to the needs and adapt to the needs of our students as they are taking NSTP2 so it becomes more of an appreciation for the course. Maraming maraming salabat po at lagit lagi para sa bayan. Thank you very much, Professor Kenny. That concludes today's webinar. Thank you once again to our speakers and all our participants on Zoom and YouTube Live. 
Uh, for those who miss or would like to revisit today's session, you can watch it on UP Diliman NSTP's YouTube channel. Just search for NSTP Diliman or NSTP Online on YouTube. And you can subscribe to NSTP Diliman YouTube channel to get updates for the next webinar. And to our participants, please don't forget to accomplish the evaluation form for the certificates. The link is on the screen and on the chat box that is bit.ly slash NSTP Online LTS. Muli ako po si Regina Valerio. Maraming salamat po. Sa iba ko